Hey guys, my name is Vardhan and I'll be your instructor for today. So on behalf of Edureka, I welcome you all to this webinar on Linux tutorial and in today's session, I'm going to give you a complete overview of Linux. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or if, uh, if you have good knowledge about Linux, but I'm going to teach you concepts that you can take away home and you can execute for yourself. So guys, before I get started, let me just take a quick confirmation from you people. I hope uh, you can hear my voice and see my screen. If that's the case, uh, please put that in the chat box and I'll get started. Okay, so I'm getting a couple of uh, acknowledgements here. Ravi says he can hear my voice and see my screen. And uh, so does Akash. And the same can be said for even uh, Hemant. All right. So guys, it seems like it's all fine. Let's get started with the session. All right. Now, uh, before I uh, get started with the first topic, let me just show you the agenda and tell you what we're going to cover today. Okay. So this is the agenda and uh, I'll be covering the topics in this flow. Okay. First, I'll uh, talk about the birth of Linux and tell you why they became popular. All right. And then I'll talk about the various distributions of Linux. Okay, so Linux is basically a kernel. Most of the people think that Linux is an operating system in itself. Well, that's not the case. So I'll uh, talk about the various uh, versions of Linux. Okay, the various uh, operating systems of uh, Linux. I will talk about those things. And then we'll uh, get started with the hands on right after that topic. Okay, so in the hands on, we have. Uh, I've categorized this into different uh, phases where, you know, I'll talk about the basic Linux commands first and then I'll show you how to work with files and directories and then I'll show you how to add and delete users. You know, you will learn all those administration aspects and finally there will be one networking aspect which I'll cover in Linux. Okay, so there is something called as SSH. Okay, SSH stands for secure shell and this is used for communication. Supposing you want to communicate with the remote host, right? When I say remote host, it means a system that's uh, located remotely, which you don't have uh, physical access to. So that kind of a machine, how will you access that machine with the help of SSH? So I will talk about all these things. And uh, yeah, so if you guys have any doubt or any problems during the session, please put that in the chat box and uh, I'll answer them right away. All right, guys. Cool, Ravi. Is it fine? All right, great. Ravi says that he's new to Linux. Oh, great, Ravi. No problem. That's exactly the uh, target audience for this webinar, right? So, uh, you know, this is going to be a complete basic tutorial and uh, you know, for anyone that's going to get started with Linux for let it be college students or professionals who are uh, absolutely new, right? So we're all used to using windows or Mac, right? So most of the people in here would have uh, just used windows because it's cheaper and it's better, but Linux is something that is a software developers favorite operating system, right? So, that's why uh, you know there is so much hype and so much demand for Linux professionals and Linux administrators. And uh, if you want you know to get started with a career in that domain, then we can get started from uh, this tutorial from today. All right, guys. Okay. So uh, without wasting much time, let's go to the first topic, and that is why did Linux become popular? Well, uh, before I talk about uh, you know why they became popular, let's look at the birth of Linux, how things started off. Okay. So back in 1969, there was this person called, uh, you know, in fact, there were two people, Dennis Ritchie and Ken Thompson, right? So they were working in the AT&T Bell Labs and what they did was they created this C programming, right? So we're all aware of uh, programming, right? So we're all aware of these basic programming languages, right? So C is one of the most basic and one of the most uh, effective and the root of all the other programming languages. So that was C and it was them that uh, developed C and the Unix operating system. So that was what happened in 1969, okay? And then in the decade that followed, okay, so basically in the 1970s, people started developing or contributing to the development of these two things, okay? So they started uh, contributing to the development of the C programming language and the Unix operating system. So in our session, we'll uh, discuss more on Unix operating system. And uh, since it's about Linux, right? So Unix is basically the mother of uh, Linux because uh, Linux is based on the Unix operating system. Okay, I'll tell you uh, how that's the case uh, in some more time, but that's why we are starting off with Unix operating system. Okay, so I'm now going to cover about uh, C and getting back to our slides. So it says growth of Unix because of open source collaboration and there was commercial sale of Unix. Now what this meant is that, you know, the product that Dennis Ritchie and Ken Thompson created, right? That those were, uh, you know, something really attractive. There were some amazing software and operating systems that would, uh, you know, power machines and computers. Now what this meant was, uh, you know, they had to be developed to become even better, right? So they made it open source. Uh, it was, uh, when we say open source, it means that it was freely available to use uh, by anyone. So anybody, any person, any scientist or uh, any engineer or anybody could just get access to the source code and start improving that uh, source code. And if they feel that they have improved the software in any way, then they can just, uh, you know, give that code back to uh, the developers. So basically it was all about uh, collaborated uh, development. So that's what happened with Unix operating systems. 
in the 70s many uh, hippies uh, scientists they all collaborated together uh, wrote their own code their own version of uh, unix operating system and contributed to the development of uh, unix operating system and uh, since AT&T they were the uh, ones who built unix or the ones they were responsible for founding unix they were the ones that uh, gained a lot of benefit they got help from other people for uh, you know developing the operating system and what they did in turn was they made it a business right so they made money out of that by you know starting commercial sale of unix and uh, this was something that did not go down well with uh, many people and this did not go down well with the other developers and scientists because uh, it was their effort which uh, contributed to the growth of uh, unix but however they are not getting any benefits of you know unix because adnt that was making money out of somebody else's work so that's what happened in the 1970s okay and then came the 1980s which uh, was a little more different so instead of uh, you know buying uh, you know unix from adnt and uh, you know having uh, two different versions of unix one was a free bsd and the other one was the paid adnt version of unix so instead of going to go for them companies started developing their own unix so ibm came up with uh, their own uh, unix version called the aix solaris came up with their own version called the sun operating system and hp came up with their own version of unix called hp ux so there are other versions also like posix and all these things now since there were many versions right many flavors and many dialects of the same unix operating system it was becoming a little problematic because each of the dialects would be a little different so the uh, ibm's unix would be different from hp's unix and solaris's unix or it would be different from posix okay so each of them would be different but however they're all based on the same thing so it was unnecessary uh, you know confusion there uh, with so many versions of unix so that is when this person called richard stallman came up with something called as the gnu project okay so i told you earlier that uh, linux is just a kernel and not an operating system on its own so what this person did was you know he came up with something called as a free software movement so he wanted something like you know back in the 70s when everyone could collaborate and work on the same one single operating system like that he tried to bring back that era and this uh, free software movement of his this idea led to the gnu project so the gnu project was all about people being able to access an operating system for free and uh, you know developing that operating system so that's what uh, this led to and uh, that's what we call even today right so gnu is uh, basically the operating system and the uh, linux is the kernel that powers the operating system so a combination of these two is what results in one of the distributions of linux so we have multiple distributions like ubuntu uh, centos uh, red hat debian fedora all these things so all these things are uh, flavors a combination of one of the operating systems and the uh, you know linux kernel okay so that's what uh, they are so this is what happened in the 1980s and then you know mid to late 1980s was when richard stallman came into the picture and he came up with the gnu project where people could develop uh, you know and use free operating system so that's what happened here and the event that happened after this is what is the result of uh, today's world okay so after that then in the 1990s so probably 1991 or 1992 that was when this person called linus torvalds who was uh, still back in college at that time he put the linux kernel source code online so he was uh, trying to use the POSIX version with one hardware called 386 and he thought that it's compatible only with that hardware and uh, so he put the source code online for anyone to use and later they found out that it could be used with the GNU and that's when the whole uh, thing gained popularity. So that's when we uh, you know came up with something called as the Linux plus uh, GNU this whole term of having a kernel plus this operating system and getting them to work together. So that's what happened here. All right. So guys, uh, that's how Linux was born. Okay. Now, uh, without wasting any more time, let me go to the next slide and uh, talk about the various distributions of Linux. So I told you that there are many versions like Ubuntu, CentOS, and also let's uh, talk about those. And uh, when we talk about distributions, the most important and the most famous ones are uh, those of uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Fedora, and Debian. Okay. So these three are uh, primarily different companies and enterprises. Well, Debian is basically not one company. It's kind of you know let's say a group of developers developing this uh, version of linux okay this version of linux and the ubuntu version so that is what debian is and uh, the red hat is basically an enterprise it's a company that is uh, commercially selling the linux distribution okay and it's probably the most used and the most popular of uh, them all uh, why because they are very stable they are very reliable and as it's written here servers and workstations right so it's the preferred uh, linux distribution for servers and workstations the red hat uh, enterprise linux so they have a free version so that's called the uh, centos and uh, today's demonstration i'll be showing it to you on centos only okay so they have that and they have uh, various other uh, distributions in fact even fedora right that which we are going to talk about next even fedora is a company that's funded by red hat itself 
so it's again one of the variations of uh, Red Hat and Fedora has its own set of you know distributions under it and uh, that's about the Fedora distribution then comes the Debian so this again I spoke about uh, Debian so Debian is you know the Linux distribution that is uh, developed with the help of many developers so this is not developed for commercial purpose it's basically free and open source software and anybody with the skills can start uh, contributing to this software and you have many other distributions okay so these are among the uh, important and the commercial ones and if you're uh, talking about some of the free distribution which people can use then they are Ubuntu, Linux Mint, CentOS, uh, OpenSUSE, uh, Gen2 and many more okay so there are almost 100 uh, Linux distributions today and you can use any of them you know if you're getting started with Linux then I would uh, suggest you to either start off with Ubuntu or CentOS because uh, CentOS is you know something that's really reliable and that's really fast okay and Ubuntu is the most popular Linux distribution out there okay and so I read somewhere that Ubuntu is the third most used operating system okay so that's what uh, Ubuntu is all about of course it's not uh, as fast as CentOS but still Ubuntu is you know a very popular and uh, very handy tool and Linux Mint is uh, the other uh, distribution which can be used for uh, playing movies and uh, listening to music because uh, this gives you more of a Windows like interface so that's what Linux Mint is so we have various distributions like this and yeah so guys uh, any doubts I mean some of you told me that you know you people are newcomers and haven't started with Linux so you can start off with one of these distributions mentioned here you can either go for uh, the Red Hat Enterprise Linux or the Fedora or the Debian or the other uh, operating systems which are uh, based on them okay so the CentOS here it is based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux okay so uh, the rel right we call them rel so they have the free version that you know they provide for uh, enterprise users are is that of uh, centos and uh, fedora again for that matter of fact you know uh, they have uh, multiple distributions under them under their name and debian are the people who are the founders of uh, ubuntu okay so ubuntu is a distribution that is based on debian and since ubuntu is so popular there are different versions of ubuntu itself right there are other distributions like x ubuntu or ed ubuntu all these things and uh, they are the other you know versions of Ubuntu so that's about the uh, different uh, Linux distributions and uh, you guys can probably you know if you're newcomers then I would suggest you to go for either Ubuntu or CentOS like I said earlier so it seems like people are all good okay so I'm getting a couple of uh, comments from people all right great so let me go to the next slide then okay so now we are in this slide and uh, let's talk about the features of Linux here okay so the Linux features you know when we say features it's basically those compared to the other operating systems compared to uh, Windows and compared to Mac okay so compared to them how does Linux perform and you know what are the benefits with Linux and uh, first of all we have uh, this feature of uh, you know the updates being very easy to be performed if you have any software in your uh, operating system or if it's the operating system itself which you want to update then it's really easy with Linux it's uh, just going to be one command that you need to run and you know you can run that command from the terminal okay for those guys who don't know what a terminal is so let me just open my uh, Linux version and show you what a terminal is okay so this is my uh, CentOS version of Linux all right and then you have different options here right so the terminal that you see here this is what I was talking about so when you open the terminal there's another window that opens okay now this is the command line interface so when I say command line interface uh, this is where I can uh, put in my commands and I can get my uh, you know software or my kernel to listen to those commands and perform actions by creating a process for uh, those commands so the whole benefit of uh, Linux is this CLI because the CLI is really helpful if you're uh, going for Windows or something you have a very good GUI alright so even in Linux you have a GUI so let me show you the GUI aspect so similar to Windows you can just uh, go to the computer and you can go to file system you can open various other uh, folders and directories so you have multiple directories and uh, folders here right so I mean directories are basically folders folders is what you call in Windows and here you call them directories so I can go into any of these uh, you know directories and I can close them like this I can access any of these directories I can access any software or anything that's installed anywhere so Linux basically provides a GUI too okay but the thing with Linux is that you also have a terminal right this terminal is basically a command and interface where you can you know put in your uh, commands and you can get the software to behave the way you want to you can run certain commands you can install software you can run uh, programs you can uh, run codes so that's what the advantage with the uh, CLI is and this is basically the reason why uh, it's very popular among all these software developers okay so I told you earlier that software developers is a favorite tool right Linux 
So that's because uh, Linux is uh, the free version of Unix and it's also you know possible to develop and create so many programs. So that's the thing with uh, Linux. So that's why it's so popular. So back in the slides, I told you that it was very easy to perform updates, right? So those updates can be uh, you know easily performed by just running a few commands here. You know by uh, writing one single command, I can update a particular software. Supposing I have Java installed in my uh, system, then I can just write a command for updating that. I can just say sudo yum update and the uh, package name if it's java i can just put the java version if it's uh, any other uh, language or if it's any other software then i can put that software name over here and update the uh, application so that's how simple and that's how easy uh, you know it is to update softwares over here so i was uh, talking about uh, this aspect so let me go back to the slides and talk about the other features okay so that was how updates can be easily performed and then another feature is that the software is free you don't have to pay for uh, linux so because windows of course you all know that windows is paid you can't you know have a pirated version if you're caught having a pirated version you will be uh, fine of course uh, home uh, you know desktop users and home users don't really have that problem because there are no routine checks but companies cannot use uh, the pirated version of windows because if there are audits they can come and seize uh, the computers and put a heavy fine on the company so that's what we say when the free software licensing is there in uh, linux because you don't have to have any license you can just uh, you know get all the folks in your company to work on linux for free so that's the free software licensing aspect and then you have the access to source code right so when we say access to source code i told you that back in the 70s people could just collaborate together and develop the operating system so that is what i'm talking about here so the entire the source code for uh, running this os the basically the ubuntu or the centos source code is available to you and you can customize it and you can uh, you know change it the way you want you can make it behave the way you want to and uh, if it's a really good feature that you've added then you can also share your uh, discoveries and your uh, you know features with other people with other uh, fellow developers you can do all these things so you have complete uh, you know access to the source code and you have complete freedom with what your os can do and how it behaves but the same thing cannot be said for uh, windows right so windows you cannot change it completely you don't get access to the source code at all and you can't change all the features the way you want to because that's a proprietary tool and uh, it's uh, programmed to behave in one way and if you try changing too many things then your uh, you know windows will uh, report so that's what is going to happen so that's about the uh, access to source code feature and then we have another feature that is uh, multiple distributions so i spoke about uh, the different distributions in the previous slide so the basic distributions are those of red hat debian or fedora right so uh, you have various versions of them itself you have uh, different uh, flavors in the red hat and you have different uh, ones in the debian and again fedora has a lot of other distributions further many distributions are based on uh, them so you have uh, so many options and if you don't like one of the distributions then you can work on another distribution right so if you don't like centos because uh, you know you don't get support for everything then you can use ubuntu okay it is the most popular operating system and it has support for almost every application and uh, every software so you can use that but if you're unhappy with the speed of ubuntu then you can probably switch to centos so you have all that uh, flexibility and all this flexibility without any cost okay uh, no cost with respect to uh, energy or having to learn something new because all these are linux at the end of the day the commands will be the same almost 98% of commands will be the same there are just going to be minor uh, differences in the commands that will be executed in uh, the different uh, distributions but yeah 98% of them would be the same you won't have a tough uh, transition time also you will have uh, you know you can gain so many benefits by using linux and the last but not the least right so this feature is probably the highlight of uh, linux so it says better malware protection so when we say better malware protection we say that it's the ultimate okay uh, in windows if uh, you people uh, would have noticed that you need an antivirus because uh, it's prone to viruses and uh, attacks and bugs and all these things so people can easily hack into your system right so the same thing cannot uh, you know happen with linux you don't need an antivirus at all linux is completely antivirus free okay 100% you don't need an antivirus and in fact you don't even have an antivirus but of course it doesn't mean that you know it's completely secure also uh, security is something that's really good but it's still developing in linux but it's definitely better than windows right so you can be sure that no one's going to hack your system so easily so that's what uh, linux is all about so guys that brings us to the uh, end of this slide of linux features okay and if you guys have uh, you know any doubts even now about linux and how good linux is then uh, that should have been clarified and put to rest by now okay so i have not got any question from uh, any participant 
and uh, if you guys have any doubts please put them in the chat box and I'll answer them all right okay so moving on so uh, enough with the theory now let's straight away get started with our hands-on okay so I'm gonna show you how to run commands and how to do various other things with the CentOS operating system okay so first of all the first part of this hands-on session is going to be about you know an introduction to the terminal and the various commands and the basic commands and how to browse through the uh, different uh, directories okay so we use commands like pwd clear ls and cd commands okay now uh, let me go to my centos okay in case i uh, forgot to mention it earlier then guys i'm using a vm here okay so i'm running my windows operating system on my uh, laptop and i have a virtual box installed and in the virtual box i've instantiated my uh, linux virtual machine okay so my linux distribution here is uh, centos let me just show you another thing okay so this is the virtual box that i was talking about this is what I'm running in my windows and uh, I have uh, you know multiple options so I can choose any VM that I want to so this is the virtual box and all these are uh, the different VMs that we have in my virtual box so currently I'm running this VM called master okay and later on I'll be turning on even this VM called slave now I'll be doing these two for uh, showing you how SSH works so I told you in the agenda slide that I'll uh, you know uh, get two remote machines to access each other right so for that purpose I need uh, these two VMs and of course both are sent to us and uh, yeah, as you can see the information it says that if I do bit sent over system I've called it uh, or named it master and this one is named it as uh, slave So similarly, I have the uh, Ubuntu uh, also so the Ubuntu 64 bit is uh, this so let me just uh, turn on the Ubuntu and show you how Ubuntu looks like Okay, so let's just wait for some time Okay, so let me just enter the password for the user and uh, here we are this is my ubuntu uh, os right so even this is being hosted on the same virtual box so i uh, am kind of running two different virtual machines at the same time okay so we have options uh, to browse the internet and uh, again open the terminal here the terminal option is uh, right here in my ubuntu operating system okay so i just wanted to show you the uh, ubuntu operating system so let me just quickly turn it off and uh, go back to my uh, centos and start running a couple of uh, commands okay so I was uh, showing you the uh, center was right so login okay so this is my uh, terminal and uh, first of all the main difference that you people need to understand between Windows and Linux is that in Windows it was you know the storing uh, files or folders it was all in drives okay so we had a C drive we had a D drive we had uh, many more drives like that and we could store our uh, documents all in those folders okay but in Linux it's a little different from how uh, Windows works in Linux we have something called as the root directory okay so we have file system here right so basically whatever folders or documents or directories you have everything can be accessed from the file system when I clicked on uh, file system then you would have noticed that I got a forward slash here okay so this forward slash basically means root okay this means I'm in the root directory and in the root directory every document and every uh, folder is present in this root directory okay now whether it is uh, me storing some kind of uh, you know important uh, files or uh, mp3s or videos then everything can be accessed from the root so you can uh, think of this something like a tree hierarchical structure okay so you have one root and all the other branches and all the uh, leaves and all those things you can consider them to be the different directories and the files inside so they can all be accessed from the root and if you want me to show you where uh, one minute okay so now this is your desktop right so you have the different icons here and each of these icons are for different operation so you have uh, Edureka's home and then you have a terminal and you have an LMS so this is a folder and this is a document okay so readme is a document so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna browse to the desktop folder so from uh, root directory if you go to this uh, folder called uh, home right so under home directory you have other option you have Edureka and Uzi okay so now if I go to the Edureka directory then you have other options of uh, desktop documents downloads uh, music and all these things so if I go to desktop then in this directory you have the files and the different things that are present on my desktop so LMS was a folder that was present readme this is a file that was present the terminal was present on my desktop so that is available here so Eclipse IDE is present here so all this was present on my desktop so I get the same thing accessed uh, from here and similarly if you're downloading something from the internet then that will get downloaded to uh, this folder the downloads folder right so you have a documents folder similarly you have a videos folder music folder so all these uh, files or folders will be stored in some place right so they will be stored in your uh, slash home slash edureka 
okay if you are downloading them and uh, you know, if not if it's going to be softwares which you're going to install then you can install them in any other uh, directory here in fact most of the softwares that you install they'll be by default they'll get installed in this directory in the bin directory right so you have the bin directory you have the uh, lib directory which will have a list of all the different libraries that the uh, OS would uh, use and then you have the sbin you have all these things right so they can all be accessed from here and uh, that's about accessing them from the GUI aspect okay and the same thing can be done through the uh, terminal okay now uh, let me go to my terminal and show you how that is done so this is my uh, terminal okay this is the command line interface where I can uh, put in my commands and when those commands uh, are executed by the uh, kernel or by the shell then uh, program will get uh, activated and some kind of uh, features will run all right okay guys uh, so before I get started, let me go back to my slides and show you what are the different basic commands that I want to run first of all. Okay, so as you can see, it says Linux provides a CLI to communicate with the operating system, right? So that was a terminal that I showed you. The CLI is called the terminal, and the CLI is basically it's better for tasks which cannot be performed with the GUI. You know, uh, I showed you the concept of uh, going to different directories and different folders, right? So it was a little tough. I had to go to go through multiple directories. So through the GUI, that's one kind of uh, you know drawback. You'll have to spend a lot of time uh, navigating. But uh, with the uh, CLI, it's easier. It's just one command, and you can access the directory that you want to. That's the advantage with uh, the CLI. Okay, and this is just one basic uh, example that I'm giving you. There are many more advanced concepts and topics which uh, is not very easy to perform with the help of a GUI. So in those places, you can just use the CLI to perform those uh, tasks. And the CLI is also much faster in quite a few ways. Okay, so that's the advantage with the CLI and running the commands. Basically, the first and foremost, you have the PWD. Okay, now this stands for print working directory. Okay, and what it does is it displays the current working directory of the terminal. Okay, and then there's this forward slash, and I told you that the forward slash represents the root directory. Okay, now let me go to the terminal and show you these two things. So, uh, right now we are in the home directory. Okay. Now uh, let me just uh, type it down. Let me just put PWD and when I put PWD it prints the current working directory. Okay, the presently working directory. So that is home slash edureka. Now uh, if I go to the uh, computer and uh, file system and home and inside this edureka then what do you see here right? So this is the folder that I'm accessing through my terminal because the present working directory is set to this folder okay now if I want to you know say I want to change the directory it means I want to change from this particular folder to a different folder so there are other options like desktop folder and documents folder right if I want to move to one of these folders then how will I do it using the terminal so I'm just going to show you how that is done I just want to minimize this a little bit yeah the command for that is cd space the name of the folder supposing I want to go to the desktop folder then I can just put dsktop all right and when I put enter then I'm inside this folder so earlier you had you saw this option right so this represents the directory I'm in okay I was in fact in the home directory and right now I'm in the desktop directory so desktop is uh, the directory inside home and if I want to you know list down the contents in the uh, desktop then I can run the ls command okay so when I put ls it basically lists down the different folders and the different files that are present in that directory Okay, so we have the Eclipse, we have LMS, which is a folder, we have README, which is another uh, file. We have all these things. Okay, so let me just uh, go to the uh, desktop folder and show you the same. Okay, we have the uh, terminal, we have the LMS, which is a folder. And similarly, going back to the terminal, if I want to enter this Linux folder, then I can again, uh, you know, just say CD and uh, space LMS. Okay, when I do this, I'm inside this folder. Okay, now if I put ls, then I have the list of the folders or documents that are present in this LMS folder. Okay, so uh, ls is basically the command to list down the folders or files in that directory. And yeah, cd space the file name or the directory name would move you to that particular directory. Now that is the same thing that I have discussed in uh, this slide here also. Okay, so I spoke about the uh, present working directory which displays the current uh, directory that your terminal is uh, in. And then you have the root directory from where all your directories or folders are marked, right? So everything can be accessed from the root directory. So that is this. And then you have something called as the echo command. You have the uh, su and the sudo commands, okay? Uh, these are something a little advanced. So before I show this, let me show you the uh, clear command. Let me explain the clear command, okay? Now getting back to my uh, terminal, when I type clear, 
the whole uh, CLI is cleared, right? My terminal is cleared. So whatever commands I ran previously, those are not present anymore. But what happens is those commands, they don't get deleted or something. They are just scrolled down. So as you can see, they are still present here. So when I scroll down, uh, what happens is, uh, you know, it just makes sure that the other documents or the other uh, commands that I specified earlier, those are all uh, hidden and I'm uh, showed something new. So that's what uh, happens here. Okay. So that is this. Now I told you that, you know, by giving CD, you can go to the directory or the folder that's in the present working directory, right? But uh, how about uh, going back to the previous directory? So basically from Edureka folder, to go to desktop, we clicked on this and then we entered this folder, right? So from this directory, by clicking on LMS, you go to a different directory, right? So you go in here, but using the GUI, you can just click on the uh, cross mark here and you can exit that directory. But how about you doing that with the help of the terminal? How will you do it here? So to do that, we have the option called CD space two period marks period marks or full stop so that's what we call it right dot so if you have uh, two dots after cd this means you want to navigate to the previous directory so we are currently in the lms and when i give enter i'm back to the desktop folder right the desktop directory now again if i uh, give the same command again then from a desktop i need to go back to this edureka directory correct so there we go tilde symbol here it represents that we are in the uh, home directory okay so the uh, home directory is basically uh, I can also access the home directory by just giving uh, CD and enter. Okay, that I can do it from any other directory. So let's say I am just uh, doing an LS and I'm changing directory to uh, downloads. Okay, D O W N L O A D S. Okay, so just you got to remember to give the exact name of the uh, folder or the directory that you want to travel to. So only then it will work. Otherwise, if you just give D O W, it won't really work. Okay, so after this, uh, if you give enter, then you go to the downloads uh, folder and uh, do we have anything inside downloads? No, we don't have any other folder or directory under download. So now let's try going to the uh, home directory from here straight away. Okay, so I initially told you that by having two period uh, marks after, uh, you know, CD, you go to the previous directory in that path, right? So instead of that, if I uh, just give a CD, Okay, and if I give enter, then I'll straight away go to the home directory. And this is with respect to uh, any directory, no matter in uh, which directory I am in. So if I just give CD, then it will go to the home directory. Okay, so that's what the benefit with the CD command is. You can give CD to move to any directory. Okay, so I have a question here from uh, Shashikant, and Shashikant is asking me, uh, should we have to do it CD and LS every time? It seems a little complicated. So Shashikant, you don't need to really do that because uh, I was just about to get to that point. Okay, if you want to go to a different uh, directory or a different folder, you don't need to give CD and uh, LS every time. Okay, so LS is basically only for you to uh, figure out or understand what are the different directories inside a particular directory. Okay, so if I know the path, then I can just feed it right away in one command and enter that directory. Now, uh, let's say I am currently in the CD directory. So this is uh, CD. So this is my home directory. Okay, now if I click on desktop and if I click on LMS and then you have another folder here. Okay, you have HBase. Okay, now supposing I want to go to any of these uh, directories from my terminal, then I don't have to, you know, put CD three different times and uh, followed by LS and then go to those directories. I can just uh, specify this thing in just one command. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say CD space or since right now we are in the uh, home directory, I need to give uh, desktop. Okay. Now one more thing which I want to uh, show you people is there is this option of a tab on your keyboard, right? When you give tab, then the command here will be auto filled, right? The option will be auto filled. So uh, let me explain that again. So I'm just going to go back. So in the uh, home directory, right? So you have uh, different options. You have desktop and documents. So what I'm going to show you is by clicking on uh, CD and space. And then if I just type three or four characters of desk, okay? I want to go to this directory, but I've just typed D S K. Okay. Now if I click on tab, then the remaining uh, characters of that particular option is already uh, filled. Okay. It gets auto filled. So that is what the tab would do by clicking on tab. It'll get auto filled. So similarly under desktop, you have the option of LMS, right? So I'll just put L and if I press tab, the remaining will get auto filled. Correct. And inside the LMS, you have different directories. We saw that we have uh, HBase, we have hive and all these things. So let me go there and show you what are the different uh, directories that are there. So we have HBase, Hive, MapReduce and Uzi. Okay. Now uh, let's go to the terminal again. Supposing I want to go to uh, Uzi directory. Okay. Now when I just click on capital O and if I click on tab, then uh, it kind of auto fills the directory. Okay. But in case let's take the example of Hive or HBase over here. Okay. Now since both start with H, 
I'm gonna type H and if I click on tab, that doesn't work. Okay, it gives me further options of uh, HBase and Hive. So that is because there are uh, more than one options for uh, you know starting with H, right? There are more than one folders or directories that start with H. So that's why you're getting further options. That's why it's not auto filling. But if you see the second character here is uh, B and the second character here is I. So if you either give B and now if you press tab, then HBase is what is going to be picked up. Okay, because uh, after uh, H and B, there's only the only option is uh, of uh, H base. There's no other folder that has uh, H B as the first letters of the name. So similarly, if I just type I V and if I do tab, then Hive gets auto filled. So things like that. So uh, since our mission was to go to the H base uh, directory, I'm just gonna say H base. Okay. Now inside H uh, base, I wanted to go to one of the directories in here. So Let's say we go to advanced hedge based practicals. Okay, now for that, if you want to go there, then you just got to give this. Okay, so this is your complete path to access that particular folder. And when I give enter, then I am in uh, the advanced hedge based practicals module 9. Okay, so I'm in this uh, particular folder or this particular directory. So that is what you can do with the help of feeding a path after CD. So Shashikant, this was your doubt, right? So is it cleared? Okay, so Shashikant says yes. All right. So see, this was the uh, issue that you had, right? You had concerns that you had to put in commands multiple times. Multiple times you had to put CD and LS. So that's not uh, needed, right? So you can just feed the path if you know it. You can just feed the path in just one command and you can execute that. So similar to this, uh, you have softwares and other, uh, you know, other things which can be installed, other programs. So they can be executed and run with just one single command, and it eliminates a lot of confusion. So GUI is a little complicated in that way. Right, it takes a lot of time and a uh, lot of uh, security and permission is needed. But uh, with the help of the CLI and the terminal, then this job is simpler. Okay, so now if I want to go back to my home directory, I'm just going to click on CD and put enter. Okay, so uh, that is this. Now let me go back to my slides. I'm just going to close all these uh, folders. Okay, now going back to my slides, I showed you the print working directory command and I showed you the root directory. And uh, I showed you the clear, okay? So the echo and uh, the sudo commands is something that I did not show you. But I also spoke about the ls and the cd commands, right? So what I'm going to do is uh, before I go into details of cd and ls, right? I'm going to just show you the echo command and the uh, sudo user, okay? Now going back to my terminal, the echo command, right? So what is uh, the echo command? So uh, what is the echo command echo command is something that uh, writes its arguments to standard output So when we say arguments it uh, means whatever we type after uh, echo we will type echo space and followed by that Whatever we write so that will be specified to standard output and when we say standard output uh, It is the output that will be displayed by the uh, CLI so in your terminal whatever output you get so we'll get specified to that particular standard output Okay, now let me show you a practical example only then you will be able to understand that so uh, let's just clear the screen. So another uh, shortcut to clear the screen is Control L. Okay. If not, you can just give the clear command like this. Okay. This will clear your screen. Otherwise, you can just uh, give Control plus L, which will again, uh, you know, just clear the screen. It's a keyboard shortcut. Okay. So I told you that uh, I was talking about the echo command. So when I say echo, and if I give enter, then there is nothing that is displayed. But if I uh, say echo and say hi, see what the output uh, came. So when we executed this command, this was the output that came back. It says hi, and uh, if I say echo hi, my name is uh, Vardhan. When I say this, then whatever uh, was specified as arguments, right? So this was basically specified as arguments to this command. So the argument is specified as uh, the output. This is the takeaway from the definition. So the definition was basically that whatever the argument is, that is specified to standard output. So that's what it happens. So that's what uh, comes here. So this is one thing. And in fact, there's another uh, functionality also. Now, uh, we were all aware of the concept of uh, variables, right? So we can assign uh, some kind of value to a variable and we can also print that with the help of the echo command. Now, uh, let's say that we have a variable uh, x, okay? And uh, let's give it a value 100, okay? So now if I uh, just say echo dollar x, then the value that is stored in this variable, right? That will be printed. Uh, because uh, echo is something that's just gonna print the uh, argument to standard output. Okay, it will display the value that is present over here So if it's just a string then that will be printed and if it's a variable that I'm specifying Then even that will be printed. So the difference between uh, the variable and uh, string is this dollar. Okay, 
now if i just give uh, echo dollar x then i've uh, set the 100 value to x right so that 100 will be printed here so like i told you 100 is printed but uh, the same thing if i give echo x without the dollar then see what's printed it is x which is printed so that is the difference between the string and a variable okay so you can you know have again a variable uh, called name or you can have a variable called uh, vardhan and you can store the value of 10 okay but if you want the value to be displayed then you got to append dollar before the variable name okay so that is about the echo command and uh, in fact there are a lot of advantages with uh, this command and i will uh, talk about the other features and the other places where this is used later during the session but uh, till then this kind of an introduction is uh, enough for now okay so going back to the uh, slides what else do i have uh, okay so we have the su command correct so as it says su it is used to switch to the root user okay uh, so that use super user permissions can be used to execute commands all right and then you have uh, su username uh, used to switch to a different user and then you have uh, sudo command which executes only that particular command with the root or super user privileges now these three what they essentially mean is that you get more permissions so if i go back to my terminal so if you guys remember then i logged into uh, centos with the edureka user right so that is uh, displayed here also so uh, it says uh, edureka at localhost right so uh, this is the username of this account and uh, similarly you have something called as the root user okay this is my user and then you have the root user and what the root user uh, is is the root user gives you a lot of uh, permission so that's like the ultimate uh, super user of uh, this particular system so basically if there is any folder that cannot be accessed uh, by my user okay my user name is uh, edureka and if i do not have the permissions to access that particular uh, directory or uh, that particular folder then we can use the root user because root has the ultimate privileges so any command that is executed with the root user then that will be executed okay so because root has all the privileges it has all the permissions so that's what uh, the root user is and uh, you know there are certain uh, functionalities which need the su user or the root users uh, permission and i will show you all those things later but for now what you need to understand is by just uh, giving su then uh, you can switch to the root user okay and uh, it asks for the password of course you got to know what is the password for your root user and when you give the password you will be logged in as a root user so you are not uh, edureka anymore okay and as you can see here you are root at the rate local host so this is the host name and this is my uh, username okay root so earlier you might have noticed that there was a dollar symbol okay but now it is a hash so this uh, basically this hashtag uh, represents that we are inside the root user and we are accessing the uh, you know executing commands as a root user so that's what it means and if you want to get out or exit the root user then you can just type exit and give enter so now you are back as yourself now you are going to be executing commands as a Eureka user okay and uh, another thing that you can do is if you have multiple users okay and if you want to switch to one of the other users then you can also give the uh, su command and uh, go to switch to the user uh, supposing the username is uh, let's say abc is the username then i can just give su space abc okay now since i don't have any uh, user uh, uh, you know a user account called abc it will probably throw me an error or tell me that it does not exist okay but the point that you need to note is that if you have any user then you can uh, just switch to that user from the terminal by using the su command okay su space the name of the user account so again uh, later during the session there's a topic about uh, creating and uh, deleting users so at that time i will show you how you can switch to another user uh, from the terminal okay so let's park it for for later because uh, it's a little complicated if I uh, tell you that right now. So uh, I think uh, I've covered pretty much uh, everything about uh, SU, and there's one other command called sudo. Okay, so sudo basically lets you execute a particular command as a root user. So when I give uh, sudo and ls, then what happens is uh, this particular command ls command, which will list down all the other directories or folders in the current working directory right so this will be executed as a root user okay so uh, similarly so earlier i executed the su command and i gave a password for that the difference between the two is that with the help of uh, sudo then only that particular command will be executed as a root user but uh, whereas with su then the entire set of commands after that will be executed as the root user as you will be logged in as a root user itself so let me just show it to you again so this was the ls command which i executed as a sudo user okay as a sudo user or as a root user but if i just uh, give su and if i give the password then i enter and i can uh, enter the same details okay i can put the same command ls as a root user 
so basically the uh, kind of results I get will be the same okay but it's just the difference is that the uh, user that will be executing that particular command so I hope uh, this clears your doubt okay so I'm just gonna say exit and uh, clear the screen and if I go back to my slides I'll just read out the definition so sudo basically executes only that particular command with the root or the super user privileges okay and uh, when you give sudo username you can switch to a different user and when you give uh, SU, you can switch to the root user. So that's what uh, I showed you the differences between the three. You first give SU, and then it'll ask you for the password. You specify the password, and then you'll be logged in as a root user. And then you can execute your uh, commands. You can execute any number of commands you want to. And then you can exit that particular root access and then come come out of it. And if you want to execute another command with the uh, root permission, okay. And if it's just one command which you want to execute, then you can just uh, give uh, sudo and then you can put your command there right so I will uh, you know talk about these things later but uh, for now what you need to understand is the basics and these are the basics okay the PWD the echo the SU commands because all these things come in handy when you uh, go to the advanced uh, concepts so going on to the next slide we have the LS uh, commands here okay I showed you one command that is what happens when you just put the LS command so now there are uh, different options that you can uh, use along with the LS Right, so basically LS uh, stands for uh, listing all the contents in the current working directory. Okay, and uh, if I go back to my slides, right now we are in the uh, home directory, and if I give LS here, it will list down all the directories that are uh, present in my home directory. Okay, so let me just clear the screen and execute that again LS. So uh, right now we have desktop, downloads, and music. So these three are some folders. We have documents, which is another folder. All these things are folders, and these are documents okay documents and files so these are the uh, directories or folders these are the documents or files so this is what you get when you execute the ls command now if you go to the slides then you will notice that you have certain options that you can type along with the ls so when you say ls path then you can uh, you know probably list down the list of contents that is there in that particular path okay uh, let me go back to the uh, terminal if i say ls and if I say the path where I want to uh, list down the contents, okay, right now I might be in the home directory, okay, but what if I want to list down the contents that are present in the uh, desktop directory? Then at that time I can use ls uh, path. So what I'll do is uh, I can just put desktop, okay, and inside desktop there are many other folders. If you remember, there was one folder called LMS. So if I put LMS, okay, this is the path, right? So I have given ls followed by the path desktop slash LMS. Now if I give enter then the uh, folders or the directories that will be present in this uh, particular directory or this folder will be displayed to me. That is the uh, HBase, Hive, MapReduce, Uzi and Ping. So that is what LS and Path does. Now if you go to the slides there are other options right. So these options they can be also referred to as flags. So uh, there is a hyphen followed by one letter character. Okay, there's one character here that is L. There is a character called A. There is another set of characters here author. So all these are called options or they're also called as flag. We refer to them as L flag or A flag or author flag, all these things. Okay, now if you give the L flag, what happens is it lists down all the contents similar to uh, just giving LS, but along with its owner settings, its uh, permissions and the timestamp. So when we say owner settings, permissions and timestamp, it is with respect to uh, the particular folder inside that directory. So let me show you an example of that. So by uh, giving LS, you have all the different folders that are present in this root directory. Okay, now if I give ls hyphen l, so the same directories or same documents are listed down here, but we have additional uh, options here, right? So we have additional information. So these are the set of permissions that a particular user has. We have uh, different, we have username and we have the host name, we have the memory size, we have the date, the timestamp, and all these things, followed by the name of the file. So if you see desktop, Desktop is something uh, it was created on this day and this is the size of it and all these things. Okay, so this is called the long format. I will explain each of uh, these permissions and uh, what each of these stands for, what one stands for, what is uh, Edureka here and what is Edureka here. I'll explain the uh, all these things in some more time because uh, before I explain those things there are other commands which I want to show with respect to LS. Right, so in LS other than uh, LS minus L you have uh, LS minus A, you have LS author. Okay, so uh, let's see what happens when we give the A flag. It should ideally show you the list of all the hidden contents in the specified directory. Okay, and then if it's uh, 
if you're using the author flag then it will list down all the contents in that directory along with its owner correct so let's try executing ls uh, hyphen a first so when we give a all the hidden directories also should be displayed so as you can see these were the other uh, folders which were not visible when I gave just ls because ls just shows the list of contents that are available in the GUI right so in the GUI if you go to uh, Dragon, if you go to desktop from the GUI aspect you only get to see these okay so these are the regular files which are not hidden but of course there are going to be many hidden and those can be accessed by uh, the terminal by giving the ls minus a command okay so that is what this uh, helped in doing now if I give ls and if I use the author flag now see what happens you have the author also so instead of uh, having the username and the host name here you have the author of that particular uh, document so if this is the particular uh, folder or uh, file or a document then who is the author for that it is Ed Reka because I'm the user right so the author name will be present over here followed by the size and the timestamp it was uh, created and all these things and we get the list of contents for all the directories or folders which are present in uh, that particular uh, directory so that's what LS does okay so guys uh, that is about uh, the author flag and uh, in case we want to use a combination of uh, these flags then even that is possible so I showed you earlier that there is uh, this ls minus uh, l flag and then there is the ls minus a flag right so minus a uh, displays all the hidden contents in that uh, directory so uh, let me use a combination of them so let me say ls hyphen l and a since there are uh, two flags which I want to use then I'm just going to use one uh, hyphen symbol for uh, two different flags so when I do this then all the hidden uh, contents will also be displayed along with their extended long format okay so uh, those are the different folders or directories which are present in uh, this uh, home directory of mine okay so that is the combination of uh, ls minus l and ls uh, hyphen a so we saw a combination and uh, again so similarly if I instead of those flags if I use the hyphen s flag then it will sort that entire list by the size okay and let me show you an example of that so we use the ls minus l right now if I use s over here it will sort this entire list of uh, directories with the size the higher the the folder with the largest size will be on top and the one with the smallest size will be at the bottom so as you can see here it was all jumbled it was uh, th this is basically the size block right so this is basically for the size block here if you see the previous time when I just uh, ran ls uh, hyphen la then it was in a different order but uh, since I ran ls uh, hyphen la and capital S this has sorted the result in uh, as per the uh, size of the blocks of the folders the folder with the highest size is displayed first and the one with the lowest is displayed last so that is about the ls uh, hyphen s so there is one more command that i want to uh, show you which can be executed with the help of the ls command okay we executed the ls hyphen l a and uh, s flags right so we executed this one previously now what if you want to uh, store these details so whatever the output here was if you want to store it into another file how will you do that we have uh, an option for that okay and that is uh, this symbol greater than symbol okay it's called the direction flag input output direction flag and uh, by using this flag whatever the result or the output of the command that comes right prior to this symbol those will be stored in the file that uh, precedes this symbol so let's say that you know I want to create a new file I'm going to create that okay I'm currently in the home directory right so let's not execute it here what I'm going to say is uh, let me first change directory to documents okay now in here of course uh, I don't think there are any uh, hidden documents either so there are no folders here so what I'm going to do is uh, ls minus l a s okay and I'm going to run the uh, this command at the home slash edureka directory okay I'm going to uh, basically run the same las so basically the same results I will run them by uh, specifying this uh, directory and I will be storing this file inside my new file okay now let me name that file uh, file1.txt okay now uh, the reason I moved to uh, this directory is because I can store the file in this directory okay uh, had I not uh, moved to this directory and had I just executed this uh, ls minus las followed by uh, this direction then what would have happened is it would have just created this new file in my uh, the home directory itself okay so if I give an enter here there's a new file that would have been created under my uh, documents 
directory okay now uh, when, when I ran ls inside documents there was no folder but now let's uh, run ls so now you can see that there's a new file that's created and that is called file1.txt now that is because I uh, used this uh, direction symbol nothing but the greater than uh, symbol and when I do this whatever result that gets generated from uh, this command right from these options on these flags those will be stored in a new file and uh, the file name needs to be specified over here okay so that was a wrong command that I used it's not ls so uh, what I need to do is let me just view that file okay so to view this particular file or any file we have to use the vi editor or we have to use a g edit editor or we can use the cat command okay now the most common one is the vi editor so let's uh, just execute the vi and open this file from here okay and the reason that this ls dot file did not execute was because uh, it lists down the files right and this is a wrong usage i did uh, a mistake by specifying ls and uh, by not giving a directory so i should have used vi instead so that's why that did not come but anyways if i give vi and file name then that file opens right so the file which i created and this file has uh, the output that was displayed earlier okay so basically whatever was generated by the ls and uh, a flags of ls so that result instead of coming in the terminal it got stored in a different file okay now uh, let's just exit this vi file and explain the same thing so what you saw inside this file file1.txt the content is the same as uh, this one okay so we ran the same command ls hyphen las but just that instead of getting the output in the terminal we gave a direction command over here to uh, save it in a different uh, file and we stored this file in the home slash edureka directory okay now supposing if i uh, want to store this uh, file in the same directory then even that can be done okay it's not a big deal so this is the command right so if i remove the path over here then what happens is whatever the output gets that gets generated from uh, this option and this command that will be stored in the file1.txt inside my uh, home directory okay if i'm inside the documents directory right so let me just go back one path so right now i am inside the uh, home directory right so here if i execute that uh, command okay then a new file will be created with uh, the name file1.txt and it will have uh, the same details so um, i've done that and uh, let's see what are the contents of that file okay so it's nice right so you can uh, in this way whatever uh, output that you have that you can directly store it into another file so it's a very handy uh, command and a very handy option and I'll uh, talk about more such advantages like this later okay so for now I just wanted to show you how the direction uh, works so uh, getting back to my slides I think I've shown you how to work with uh, the ls uh, command and in the previous slide I showed you the basic commands with respect to uh, present working directory and uh, clear directory and the sudo and the echo commands so I've done with uh, ls also and uh, now I'm going to show you how to work with the CD directory so some of the CD directories I showed you earlier also I showed you how to switch to a new directory so uh, when you type CD it will just change the directory to the home directory okay so the slash home slash edureka okay now that is my home directory my home directory is uh, set to that path so if I give CD it will uh, go to that particular home directory and uh, similarly if I uh, you know give even CD and uh, space till day symbol as you can see here then even this command will uh, change the directory to the home directory okay but however if you give uh, CD space uh, just slash this will change it to the root directory so it changes the current directory to the root directory that is because uh, the forward slash here it represents the root I uh, told you this a number of times earlier okay and if there's any other path or any other folder which you want to move to then you start from the root so you specify the absolute address right you start from the root you say slash and then you put the folder name you again uh, say slash and then you put the next folder name so uh, it is similar to that the first uh, forward slash represents the uh, root directory and uh, the subsequent slashes are to differentiate between the different uh, parent and the uh, sub directories so that's what they are so this will change you to the root directory and then you have the uh, cd hyphen double period mark okay two period symbols and when you give uh, cd space uh, dot right if you give two dots cd space dot dot then it will change to parent directory so supposing I'm inside the uh, desktop directory so desktop's parent is uh, home directory right so it will change me to uh, the home directory but supposing if I was uh, inside let's say the uh, if I'm inside a directory called uh, directory C and if uh, C's parent was B 
then by running cd space dot dot from the c directory then it will switch me to the parent directory which is b so that's what uh, this does and then we have one more command here that is uh, cd within single quotation marks we have some kind of path now this is uh, useful at times when uh, your folder name or your uh, directory name has uh, two words okay so if you have two words then if you have a space in between then the space will be considered as an argument okay so terminal will consider that as an argument so if you want to switch to a document in that kind of a situation you know or if you want to switch to a directory which has a space or a document which has a space in the middle so in that kind of situation you can use a single quotation mark or double quotation mark okay so it's uh, you know you also have the comfort to uh, switch to double quotation marks so i'll execute all these things and show you okay so first i'll show you the uh, the cd tilde then with the forward slash then with the dot mark this of course i showed you earlier also and then i'll show you how to switch to another folder with you know which is having two different names with a space in the middle so going back to my uh, root so uh, right now we are inside the uh, home directory itself so if i give uh, cd hyphen desktop okay now in here we have my other directories and if i do cd and lms i'm inside the lms uh, directory okay now from here if i give cd and if i give use the tilde option right then it will switch me to the uh, root directory uh, so see this was the tilde symbol earlier okay so this tilde symbol represents root and since i uh, said change directory to tilde symbol this which implies a root it uh, basically uh, decodes it as a change directory to the root directory so when i did that i have automatically switched to root directory while earlier it was lms so uh, similarly if you are in the uh, lms directory and if you also just press cd right if you just give this command even this will switch you to the root directory so basically uh, cd and uh, cd space tilde they are uh, both the same but uh, however if you give cd with forward slash then it will uh, switch you to the root directory so when i give enter as you can see i am in the root directory so if i give ls over here i have a list of other directories which i showed you earlier so in in your file system right so yeah and so inside your file system if you open this folder then you have the root directory so inside this directory you have home and etrica and this is where desktop and documents are all present as a subdirectory of uh, this parent directory okay so this is the root directory where everything is stored so any document or any folder in your linux operating system they can be referred or they can be accessed from this root directory okay now uh, going back to the terminal let me show you an example of that i've already moved to the uh, root directory now let me say cd bin and uh, okay we have this so now when i uh, gave cd space bin then it moved me to the bin folder inside my root directory so uh, i ran the root directory i did an ls which listed down the list of uh, folders inside my root directory these were the options uh, bin boot dev these are all the different folders and when i said change directory to bin it uh, shifted me or it moved me to this particular folder okay inside the uh, root directory so right now i am in the bin directory and inside the bin directory i ran the ls command which basically uh, means listing down all the uh, contents whether it's documents or whether it's uh, folders or directories all those will be listed down okay so these are the list of all those uh, contents in the uh, bin directory okay now that we are in bin let me go back to my root directory by giving double dot okay so from bin it again i go back to my uh, uh, root directory okay so this uh, forward slash represents root directory like i told you earlier and if i do ls then i am back to this directory where uh, we have bin boot dev and uh, etc home and all these things so now what i'm going to do is uh, so now that i'm in the root directory now let me say change directory to home and inside home there is uh, edureka i want to go to edureka inside edureka let's go to desktop and then there is uh, lms okay and uh, in here if i do ls then these are the list of uh, folders here okay now i'm going to change directory to hbase and if i do an ls over here then you can see that there is one particular folder called advanced hbase practicals module 9 okay if i now just say cd and if i put adv space hbase then i will not be able to autofill the option okay that's because uh, the terminal or the cli is not able to recognize this particular uh, command because there's a space over here okay so it treats adv as a separate folder but since it's not able to find any folder here as adv that is the uh, problem okay let me show you via the gui what it looks like 
So we are in the desktop and inside LMS we have Hedgebase, inside Hedgebase we have advanced Hedgebase practical. So this was what I was talking about, this particular folder, correct? So let me minimize this for you, okay? Now this is a classic situation of when you need to use the double quotation mark or single quotation mark, okay? Now if I just uh, put the same name, uh, like say ADV and uh, Hedgebase, then it kind of autofills automatically, right? So even the quotation mark ends over here. So that uh, indicates that this is another folder that's present. So if I, uh, you know, just put enter, then it will change my directory to this particular folder. So that is what the uh, quotation mark does. So when I do enter, then I'm inside this folder. When I do ls, I have the list of uh, folders and directories inside this advanced Hedgebase practicals folder. All right, guys. So I'm just going to do a cd to my home directory, and I'm here. And that was about the different uh, CD commands that are available, which I wanted to show you. Okay, so let me just go back to my slides now and go to the next slide. I showed you all the uh, different commands here. Okay, so the next set of commands that I'm going to talk about are those of uh, cat, grep, sort, and pipe commands. Okay, so uh, let's first go to the next slide and start off with cat command. Okay, so when would we use the cat command? Guys, so it's pretty obvious, right, from uh, what it's written here. It says when you're working with files, that time you can use the cat command. So uh, the cat command, it is basically used to display the uh, content of the text files and uh, concatenate several files into one. So uh, what this means is if I have a particular, uh, you know, I have a text file. So earlier we created one text file having all the file permissions, right? So if I have that kind of a text file, and if I want to uh, display the content of that text file, then I can use the cat command. I can say cat and if I give the file name, then that content will be displayed. So when I use only the cat command with uh, one file name, it's very similar to how the VI uh, command works or how the nano command works, right? So it will display the content in the terminal itself, correct? But the difference with cat command is that with cat, I can uh, list down the contents of multiple files. So it's not just one. Okay, I can uh, have, I can even display, I can specify uh, three different file names and if I put enter, then the content of uh, all the three files will be displayed in my terminal. The same thing won't happen with VI. So if I say VI, then only that particular file's content will be displayed. So same thing with uh, nano, right? So uh, let me just go to the terminal and show you an example of uh, the cat command. So right now we are in the CD directory. Let me just maximize this. Okay, I'm gonna clear the screen. Present working directory is uh, the home slash Hedrega directory. This is the uh, home directory. And from here, let me go to uh, documents. Okay. If I do an ls, there is this file1.txt which I created earlier. Correct. So this was uh, where the different file permissions were present. Right. So if I do cat hyphen file name and if I give enter, then I get the list of uh, the contents of that particular file. So in that file, there are only uh, these three rows because this was the latest updated uh, permissions that I uh, specified in the file1.txt. Okay, so guys, I uh, earlier told you that you can enter uh, details to a file by uh, using the uh, direction command, right? So that was the greater than uh, symbol. So I'm gonna use that kind of a symbol over here and I'll uh, create a new file by adding details by using that command, okay? So initially it was, uh, I used the ls minus l, but this time I'll use the cat command itself and uh, say I'm going to give the direction symbol here and when I've done with that let me give the name of the new file let's say file2.txt now when I hit enter the command is not executed completely okay so I'm inside this place where I can enter the text so it's basically going to create a new uh, file okay now whatever text I enter here that will be stored inside this file so uh, let's say hi my name is uh, Vardhan and if I give enter, I can go to the next line and uh, here let's say, welcome to Linux tutorial by Edureka. Okay. Now, if I want to, uh, you know, just add these two lines to this particular uh, file called file2.txt, then I can press control D now. Okay. By pressing control D, I come back to my uh, command line. So what this command basically does is this cat command would have uh, created a new file file to txt and the uh, text that we entered below it, right? Uh, this will be entered inside this text. So if I do cat 
file two dot txt, then whatever I typed earlier that got saved in this file. Now similarly, if you see the uh, file one dot txt, the contents are these. Okay, so this is the contents of uh, this one, and this is the content of uh, this file. Now uh, I told you that with the help of cat command you can uh, display the content of two different files. So let me show you that option. Okay. I'm going to say file one.txt and then I'm going to say file two.txt. So in this way, I'm going to basically display two files cat. I'm going to display file one and file two. When I go enter, first the file two contents will be displayed and then the file two contents uh, or the lines in file two.txt will be displayed. Right? So first these were the permissions that were there in the first file and then uh, this was what was there in the second file. All right, guys. Now uh, this brings us to another important concept of how to append files. So CAT basically stands for concatenate, right? So that's the most important option. So if you want to uh, concatenate a particular file with you know some kind of lines, then I showed you how that is done by creating a new file. What I did was I, I created a new file, file2.txt and I concatenated these lines into this particular file. So if I just give cat and uh, if I give file1.txt and if I give uh, double marks, okay, so double direction marks which is uh, nothing but the greater than symbol okay we also call it direction marks so if you uh, give file one dot txt and followed by this if you give file two dot txt then what's going to happen is whatever contents are there in file one those will get uh, appended or concatenated to this file two dot txt okay so in my file two dot txt we have uh, these two lines okay hi my name is Vardhan and welcome to linux tutorial by edureka and file one has uh, these three lines. So basically when I uh, enter now, there will be uh, a file two in which there will be extra lines. Okay, so let me uh, do a cat file two dot txt. So as you can see, initially when I ran my uh, cat file two dot txt over here, I had only these two lines, right? But now after uh, using the bidirectional uh, symbol, okay, the direction uh, symbol, what has happened is I have three extra lines. So it says, uh, hi, my name is Vardhan. Welcome to Linux tutorial by Eureka. After that, I have the permissions, which was present in the previous uh, file. Okay, so uh, that's what happens here. Okay, in fact, it's actually four other lines. Thanks for pointing that out, uh, Heyman. So Heyman, you know, who's another person in our session, he said that there are four lines in the file one dot txt. Actually, he's correct. So total eight. So this is the uh, first line, and these are the other three lines. Uh, so you can also see that from uh, here. Okay. So the first time when I ran cat file one dot txt right, I first got total eight. This was the first line, and after that I got the permissions. Okay, so this is the first line, and then you have the uh, list of the other contents. So when we ran the ls minus l, the uh, total number of uh, entries were eight. So that was what uh, the total eight stands for. So these are the four lines that got appended to my uh, file two dot txt. Okay, but however there wouldn't be any changes to my file one dot txt because I didn't make any changes there. So let me anyway show you that also. Uh, if you see here again. The contents here are the same. It's only that the file two has got these four lines extra. So that is what the direction symbol does. So these are the uh, advantages with the uh, cat command. All right. So uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, let me go back to my slides and show you some more options. Okay. So we have uh, flags like we have the B flag, the N flag, S flag, and E flag. Let's see what each of those stand for. Okay. So uh, when we use the B flag, it's going to add line numbers to the non blank lines. Okay, so whichever line there is some text. So those lines are going to be numbered. Okay, and uh, when you say minus N, then it is used to add uh, line numbers to all lines. It doesn't matter if it's blank lines or non blank lines. It's just going to add numbers everywhere line numbers. Okay, and when you give the S flag, it is uh, basically to squeeze all the blank lines. Supposing you have three bl blank lines one after the other, then it will squeeze all those blank lines and it will reduce it. Okay, so that's what the S does and then the E flag is uh, going to uh, show you a dollar at the end of uh, each line. So let me go back to my terminal and show you this uh, option. So first of all, let's see the cat file 2.txt and uh, let me use the uh, flag minus N. So this will list the number of lines, right? So there are basically four lines from file one and these were the uh, two lines that are earlier present. So these are the uh, six lines in total we have in this file 2.txt. Okay. Let me just clear the screen because uh, it's a little uh, tough to see everything, right? So yeah. So when I ran the minus n command, the file two dot txt, the lines in there were numbered, okay, one to six. Uh, and then we have another uh, 
flag called minus B flag, right? Minus B flag will add numbers to also the uh, non-blank lines. So, but for that we need to first uh, have blank lines over here. So what we'll do is uh, I'm going to do a cat and uh, do this and file two dot txt. So when I do this, I'll be adding uh, lines to this file two dot txt. Okay, I'll be appending lines over here. So let me just give one blank line, enter some random text, and then enter you know blank line and then random text. Okay. So this is what I'm going to just enter or append to my file to txt okay you press ctrl d to exit this and now these would have been saved to my file to txt so let me just run the same command again oh sorry i should have ran this cat file to txt okay when i do this as you can see uh, it starts from here and these were the other lines that were appended okay and now if i use the cat hyphen b flag okay see what happens only the non blank lines are uh, numbered right so these lines are not numbered but if i use the minus n which i used earlier what it would do is it will number each and every line so that's the difference between minus b and uh, the minus n flag okay so n numbers all the lines irrespective of it being empty or not but whereas uh, minus b numbers only lines which are uh, non blank okay so that is uh, this one and there is uh, another flag which is the uh, hyphen s flag okay so it's not capital s it is a uh, small s right so when i say minus s then you get the list of the documents so as you can see here all the uh, spaces are squeezed into one uh, seems like there were no multiple spaces right no multiple blank lines so what we'll do is let's edit the file to txt again okay or in fact let me open it via the uh, editor vi editor okay so when i do this these are the uh, existing ones so when you uh, press insert or when you press i button or insert button you can start entering text details inside uh, this file okay now uh, right now i'm here let me add multiple blank lines here okay so as you can see there are around uh, three blank lines here one two three four there are four blank lines and here there are three blank lines okay now uh, let me press escape okay now if i give escape okay so now we are in insert mode so what i do is uh, i'm going to press escape and then followed by that if you give colon and uh, wq this would uh, save this file okay so i've made changes right i've added lines here so it would uh, save that uh, changes and it would quit the vi editor mode so if i give enter so i'm outside that file so now if you see the uh, cat file uh, 2. txt then it has additional lines right so uh, now i'm going to run the command that i ran earlier cat hyphen uh, flag s and then file name so when i do this all the uh, multiple blank lines are squeezed into one so as you can see here there there have been multiple lines here when i ran the file 2.txt but here when i ran the cat hyphen uh, with the s flag then there are all these multiple uh, blank lines are squeezed into one okay so that is uh, the uh, option with the cat command okay so i think with that i think i've covered all the different option okay there is one left there is uh, the minus e option right so okay now let me show you what that does so when we use the capital e flag okay there is a dollar sign that is appended after every line so uh, the first line is total eight uh, or let's say the first line is this one so there's a dollar sign here and after this line there's a dollar sign after this there's a dollar sign and uh, since these are blank lines you will only find the dollar sign here and uh, again after this one you have a dollar sign and uh, you know blank lines have dollar signs and yeah so that's how the uh, e flag works okay so every at the end of the line is uh, appended with the dollar symbol okay so with this i'm done with all the uh, cat commands so going back to my slides now let's go to the uh, next command that is grep okay so uh, grep command working with grep command so what does the grep command do you guys have any idea okay well i don't expect you people to but uh, yeah so if people uh, if any of you know if you have an introduction to linux then you can answer it but it's fine if you don't because i'm going to explain that it's my duty and the grep command is basically used to search for a particular string or a word in a text file right we have a file document like the one which we created now like we we have two documents like file1.txt and file2.txt and what if you want to search for a particular string right or a particular uh, word so in this case it's pretty simple because you, you can easily find them 
but what if you want to do it to uh, you know a very big file document uh, which has like millions of lines right so supposing you have any document then you'll have multiple lines right and if you want to find one particular word or if you want to go to one particular string then how will you do it so in windows you have the control f option right but via a cli you can't use it right so via a cli you use the uh, grep command okay and the format for executing the command is this so you specify grep and then you specify the string that you want to search for so options is the string that i've searched in this command and then the file name okay and this will return the result of the matching string options so similarly if you use the i flag then it will uh, return the results for even case insensitive strings so basically if you do not use the i flag then it is uh, it's case sensitive right so it will only search for options with uh, these letters but if uh, there is a word called options with a capital o where the first letter is capitalized then uh, in that case only when you use i will even that uh, particular result be uh, shown okay so that is the advantage with the i flag and then you have the n flag which is the grep uh, hyphen n which will again uh, returns the matching strings along with that line number in which line was that string or that word found so that's what n does and when you give minus v flag then what happens is uh, you will not be shown the list of lines where the results were present but instead you will be shown the list of uh, lines where the results uh, were not found where there was no matching string right so those lines will be printed with the help of v flag and then with the c flag it returns the number of lines in which the uh, results matched the search string so supposing you have like four words okay you have a big document and uh, your word your uh, string matched four times then uh, if you use the minus c flag then it will uh, display the number four instead of uh, displaying the search string okay so let me go to the uh, vm let me go to my uh, centos and uh, show you how to execute these commands okay so right now we are in the documents folder if i want to execute uh, that then we need to edit this in a different way okay we need to have a different text and this directory has uh, these documents right so let me just uh, quickly go to the uh, documents folder and here if i do an ls we have the two files which we created we have file2.txt and file1.txt so what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to see what's there in file1.txt okay so let me edit this file okay or let's say let's just create a new file what do you say we can create a new file by uh, doing this right by uh, giving the direction symbol followed by the uh, name of the file let's say automobiles automobiles this is the name of my uh, file automobiles.txt and i can start listing down the automobiles that i want so let's say car or let's say motorbikes okay we can say train well train is technically not an automobile but uh, still or let's uh, go into uh, details of the companies okay let's say maruti let's say ferrari lamborghini these are some of the most famous uh, companies right so when it comes to bikes you have yamaha then you have uh, honda right you have uh, suzuki you have Aprilia and uh, to name a few more we can add some more uh, companies like BMW we can add Audi we can add Volkswagen to this list okay now if I do a control D then uh, this will be the list of content in my uh, automobiles.txt okay uh, let me I'm gonna clear the screen now and if I do cat command here then it displays the list of uh, contents here right okay now let's use the grep command to search the content that is uh, present in this uh, text so uh, i'm going to do a grep and uh, the string that i want to search for is uh, let's say yam because in lamborghini we have the search string yam and even in yamaha we have uh, the yam right we are supposed to get two results for this so in this case so if i uh, just say grep yam and if i specify the file name automobiles.txt and if i give enter then i get the two different words right the two uh, names where this was present where yam was present okay now if i use the same thing with the uh, i flag then it will uh, display the list of uh, files in a case insensitive fashion but in my file there is no uppercase file 
I'm going to say say automobiles.txt. I'm going to append. I'm going to append this word called Amber. Okay. So Amber is another uh, automobile company. And when I do this, and if I run the cat command now, okay, you will see that along with uh, these names which was there initially, there is Amber has been appended. Okay. And this time when I search for AM, right? So it should not uh, show me this because even though there is AM here, uh, the A is capital here, but I'm searching for uh, small a. So it should not show me this result. Okay, I should get the same result that I got previously. So if I uh, do a grip AM, like earlier, I got the uh, Lamborghini and Yamaha as the only options. Okay, but now if I uh, append this with minus I or the I flag, so what happens is I'll get the option of even amber along with this because it would search for the string in a case insensitive fashion. Okay, so this time, as you can see, amber is uh, added to this list because uh, it did not consider case insensitive uh, words, letters. Okay, so that is about the I flag, and uh, there is another N flag, right? So let's see what the N flag does. So every time you use the uh, minus N flag, then it will list down the line in which the word was uh, present. So that's what uh, I mentioned earlier. So over here in line number six and line number seven, we have Lamborghini and Yamaha, right? So the line number is mentioned. Okay. Now, uh, so that's what the N flag does. Okay. So we have the V flag and the C flag left. So let's execute them and uh, see what happens. So when I remove N and when I execute V, as you can see, all the uh, results except for Yamaha and for Lamborghini would be present here. Okay. But if I give minus IV, okay, which indicates IV flag, then even Amber would not be present in the output I will get now. Okay, when I give enter, as you can see, Amber is not present because uh, Amber is part of uh, the case insensitive option, right? When we included I, this would be chosen as a search result. And since it's considered as a search result, we will display only the result, uh, the set of results which were not found. So the other lines in which text was not found were these, and that's why we got these options. Okay, now we have one more uh, flag which we need to see and that is the C flag. And when you enter the uh, C flag, then it displays the list of uh, the number of times that a string was found. So AM was uh, found two times in once in Lamborghini and once in Yamaha. So that's why we got the answer as two. Now, if I use C with the combination of I, all right, I'm going to get three. That's because even Amber will be considered in this case. Okay, guys. So uh, this is uh, what is uh, there with respect to the grep command. Okay, so uh, guys, uh, do you all have any doubts? Okay, and if you all do have any doubts, please put them in the chat box because uh, I'll be going to the next slide then. All right, and I don't think you will uh, should be having any because I've uh, explained each and every outcome, each and every uh, flag that can be used with grep. Okay, so if you all uh, do have any, any other confusion, please put them in the chat box. But in the meanwhile, let me get back to my presentation and uh, continue with my next slide. Okay. So I spoke about the uh, grep command. Okay, and now in the next slide, let me talk about the sort command. Okay, and so we use the sort command to sort the results of a search either alphabetically or numerically. All right, and uh, we can sort either files or uh, file contents or directories. So what this means is uh, whatever results you get right or uh, I mean not just results or even if uh, it's the list of uh, items that is present in a particular directory even when you run an ls command right you will have a list of uh, files and the list of folders that are there in that particular directory so we can sort even those things okay now that result can be sorted and uh, also we can sort anything else we can sort the contents of a file right we can sort the contents of the file or uh, you know all these things so that's what this means so uh, without wasting much time let me just uh, show you how that is done so you can give sort and the file that you want to uh, search. Alternatively, you can also uh, search two files at the same time by giving uh, file1.txt and file2.txt. Okay. So and the and the syntax for that is uh, sort and the file name. Okay. When you say sort on the file name, then the contents of this file will be uh, returned in the alphabetical order. Okay. If you want to sort two files at the same time, then you can uh, in arguments you can just give both the file names and it will uh, sort the contents for both file one or txt and file two txt. Okay, and again, if you want to uh, display them in the reverse order, then you can specify the R flag. And uh, for case insensitive uh, sorting, you can do the hyphen F flag. And then if you want to sort the results based on the number in a numerical order, 
then you can now use the end flag okay guys so uh, let me first of all go to my terminal and start executing them okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to clear my screen and currently let me just list on the contents of this directory so we have automobiles uh, file we have file one and we have file two when i just give a sort and press enter then i enter the interactive mode okay so here i can uh, type all this i can type random words okay I can say uh, A B C D or I can say B C D A or I can say E F E D F G all these things okay and then when I press control D it gets me out of the interactive mode and when I exit the interactive mode the text that I typed in right the input that has been sorted so this uh, up till this line was what I entered as input if you remember and uh, up till E D F G right so basically this uh, text has been ordered as per alphabetical order and since a uh, comes first in alphabetical uh, chronology this, this is first the bcda is second and then you have the other lines okay uh, these have been sorted in an alphabetical uh, order now if i give sort with the file name okay that is uh, automobiles.txt and if i give enter then this particular uh, file will be ordered in the alphabetical order okay the contents will be uh, listed down in an alphabetical order uh, let me clear the screen and show that again so let me first just do a cat and show you how the order is okay now let me run the sort with the file name okay so now if you see it was in this order initially right so car was the first option motorbike was the second train was the next Maruti and then came Ferrari and Lamborghini but uh, if you look at the sorted uh, result then it's, it's in the sorted manner right so first comes amber then comes aprilia then comes audi and then the others so that's what sorting does okay and the same thing can be done for two different files at the same time so this was the automobiles.txt supposing i want to list down even my uh, file 2 contents then i can just type file 2.txt here and uh, the results of both the files will be in my uh, terminal okay but before that let me just uh, clear the screen so that it'll be easier for you to view the results okay so now that i've cleared the screen let me uh, sort these two files okay so let's the command is sort and this is what i had previously and let me add file 2 to it okay file 2.txt now what this would do is the results of both these files right automobiles and uh, file 2 the results of those would be sorted in the alphabetical manner okay now if i give an enter as you can see here first initially you have blank space okay now uh, that is because blanks are ahead of the capital a right this is the alphabetical order correct so first comes blank space then comes uh, white space and then comes the characters so once we are done with those things then we have uh, amber aprilia audi this was the order in which uh, the files were listed in the automobiles and uh, right after c d comes okay now this line is part of the file one while these are part of uh, automobiles this was part of file 2.txt so yeah these results were uh, a part of the automobiles.txt file the blank lines here these were part of the file 2.txt and uh, again uh, these two lines right these were part of file 2.txt okay so this is what happens when you give two files as uh, arguments now uh, there are other options that i want to show you though so uh, there were flags like our flag right so our flag lists the uh, results in the reverse order okay i'm just going to clear the screen and yeah for clearing the screen the, the shortcut is control l all right guys so uh, let's say sort automobiles.txt okay it's cat right i don't want to do cat i want to do sort automobiles.txt and i want to use the flag minus r so when you use minus r it will display the result in the reverse order so we have the reverse order in which yamaha comes first and uh, amber comes last so that is the uh, reverse order and we have another flag here the other flag is uh, the f flag which will return the results in uh, the case insensitive uh, fashion okay so that is the uh, minus f and then if you go back to the slides there is uh, n option right so n will return the results in the numerical order now let me go to my uh, terminal and let me use the n flag now but of course i don't think it will uh, sort anything because there are no numericals here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, 
use the file 2.txt here okay file 2.txt okay so there are no numericals here either what I can do is I can edit these details so let me go vi and uh, say file 2.txt and I'm going to enter the insert mode I'm going to remove all these uh, unwanted lines okay so I've removed all the blank lines now I'm going to put one here I'm going to put two here I'm going to add three to this line I'm going to add four to this line okay all right guys or right, let's say let's give the order seven here okay you have two here okay so there are some kind of uh, numericals ahead of uh, you know in before every line starts right so when we run the minus n command now the sort command with the n flag now then it would sort these lines with respect to the lines with the numerical order okay so first this line would be uh, shown the blank line okay then you would be shown the uh, uh, you know the total line then you would be shown the third line and like that so let me just uh, escape colon and save and quit okay now let me uh, run that same sort command sort hyphen n file 2.txt so as you can see the uh, alphabets are first sorted okay so the lines where there are uh, text characters or alphabetical letters so those are displayed and after that the lines that are formatted after that are in numerological uh, fashion okay so uh, if I don't give the n it would be a different uh, fashion altogether so earlier uh, the file was just uh, displayed in the regular numerological order okay so where one two three four five the numbers came first and then came the text but since we ran the hyphen n the uh, alphabetical uh, letters or the characters came first okay after that it was sorted by uh, numerical letters so that's what the n flag does and, and that brings us to the end of the sort commands okay so uh, after the sort command the next one that we have in line is that of pipe command okay so this is uh, referred to as the pipe so you will find this in your uh, in your keyboards right above the enter button okay uh, where you have the backward slash so in that button if you press uh, shift and if you press that button you will get this pipe command and what the pipe command helps you does is it uh, lets you perform two operations in the same command like it will uh, let me search let's take the example that's specified here okay we are using the grep to search for a particular string from a file and uh, we are using that and then we are sorting that result okay now since there are two operations involved okay one is a sort and one is the uh, search since there are two operations involved in the same command we separate the two operations with the help of the pipe command so that's what uh, this is and uh, as the definition says the pipe command is used to output the result of one command as input to another command okay the same thing can be said over here also so we'll first search the file for a particular string and whatever result you get that will be given as input to the sort command over here right so this uh, saves us time in uh, not having to mention the uh, file name after sort again so uh, we'll just be performing one grep search and then we'll just uh, whatever result comes that result will go to the operation that's performed over here right so uh, let me just go to the terminal and show you an example of this I'm gonna clear the screen and uh, let's run the grep command to search for am from the automobiles.txt okay i'm going to use the pipe command and uh, sort this so these were the two results right so when you do a cat command or when you do when you just run the grep command uh, with am right so what would happen is you'll get these two results because these two lines or these two words have the am characters inside right now when you give the sort it would sort it alphabetically right and if I if I want to sort it in the other way then I can just run the same command with the R flag so when I uh, do R then this result will be sorted in the reverse fashion so Yamaha comes first and Lamborghini comes first so that's how the uh, pipe command can be used to get the output from uh, one operation and feed that output as the input to the uh, next operation right so uh, this is relatively a smaller topic okay and we quite often we'd be using uh, the pipe command when you want to use multiple uh, operations in the same command so that's about the pipe command okay so let me just clear the screen and get back to my presentation and see what's my next slide all about okay so now that I've uh, shown you how to sort the contents of the file let's go to the next uh, slide right so the next section of uh, this Linux tutorial is gonna be about the copy move make directory remove 
remove directory and the user permissions all right so let's get started with this section okay uh, cp stands for copy and that will be the first slide uh, that we're going to talk about okay so as you know uh, copy is basically used to copy files or directories okay and the point notice files and directories so in windows you have the option of uh, right clicking on any uh, file or any folder and uh, you know saying copy or copy paste or cut paste right that's in windows and uh, you can do that even through the gui in linux but how will you do it through the cli right through the terminal you specify this command you specify cp and if you have any flag you enter the flag and then you specify the source and the destination okay so the source is uh, basically this will be the path of the, the folder that you want to copy and this is the place where you want to copy it to all right so uh, let's uh, get back to executing and showing you a demonstration of this so i'm going to go back to my terminal so uh, first of all uh, we are in the documents directory and let's see what is there in this directory okay there are the three files that we created right there is automobiles.txt there is uh, file1.txt and file2.txt now uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the automobiles.txt and uh, paste it in my uh, desktop okay so let me just minimize this so this is my desktop right so right now i don't have the automobiles.txt but through the terminal i want to run a command which will copy the uh, automobiles.txt to this folder okay so i'm just going to minimize the terminal now uh, to show you that it happens okay in real time so what i'm going to do is uh, ls i'm going to say copy automobiles.txt this is the source and the destination is uh, root home Edureka and uh, in Edureka it's the desktop folder right when I hit enter there will be a new automobiles.txt file that will be created over here so as you can see the new file got created over here and uh, yeah so it's, it's a very simple command that you can uh, execute so you can do the same thing to even uh, directories and uh, files all right uh, so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll uh, go to the home directory and from the home directory I'm going to go to the desktop directory and copy the LMS folder, right? So the LMS folder is again, uh, you know, it's, it's a folder this time. It's not a file. So last time we copied a file. This time I want to show you how to copy the folder itself. Okay, I'm going to copy this folder and paste it somewhere else. So let me go to the terminal, CD, and I'm going to go to the desktop here. All right. So we have uh, LMS here. So I'm going to say copy lms all right so uh, i'm going to remove the slash from here because i'm going to copy this uh, folder now and uh, this would make it the source that would make lms the source and the destination is uh, we have to put the absolute path here right so we got to start from the root directory and go to home edureka and uh, let's say i want to put it in the uh, documents directory okay so something that is present uh, in the desktop directory that is uh, being copied and paste it inside the documents directory okay so when we give enter so uh, guys uh, we are getting an error here right so it says uh, copy cp omitting directory lms can you all guess why that is the case can you all like understand the meaning of this error omitting directory don't break your sweat too much because uh, the meaning is simple here it just it has just omitted the directory okay now the reason is so that is because uh, the cp command it by default it copies only files okay if you want to copy directories also then you got to uh, add another flag called r flag so let me just quickly go to the slides and show you uh, the functionality there okay as you can see here uh, we have the r flag right so cp minus r it is for recursive copy and that is for copying directories also okay and it copies also hidden files if there are any hidden files or if you have directories which you want to copy inside that directory then it will uh, it will copy that that itself so that is the thing because you cannot copy uh, directories without the r flag you can only copy files so that is the uh, meaning here and uh, we have another flag here called the v flag and that is verbose well what verbose means is it prints informative messages supposing you are uh, executing a command okay and supposing the command is going to take time like it's going to take a good 5 10 seconds then during that time it would uh, print the status of the system like supposing it has completed like step 1 to step 3 okay and it's uh, stuck at step 4 then it would print that message and as and when step 4 is completed you will get a message uh, saying that's completed and yeah similarly it's like progress wise it uh, tells you what is the progress and what are the uh, action that the system is taking and what step it's performing so it just prints such informative messages minus v okay 
okay let's uh, first start off with the i flag okay so we have something called as the cp flag i okay so when you give the i flag it enters the interactive mode so when you say interactive mode it is because uh, at times you might have uh, files which will all be already be present in in a particular directory okay uh, you saw me copy automobiles.txt once from documents to desktop okay now if i do the same operation again if i run the same command again at that time it will uh, automatically overwrite the file right because uh, the file name is the same the automobiles.txt is the, was the one that is there in my documents folder and again even over here on my desktop it is documents uh, sorry it's automobiles when i copy them what would happen is that file would be replaced okay now uh, in that kind of a situation uh, when you're copying multiple files you might want to be notified before something happens right so if you specify something like the i flag then you will get an interactive mode so the system will not take a decision on its own but instead it will not use any defaults okay that's what we mean uh, by uh, on its own okay so it would uh, you know ask you it would prompt you for an answer it will tell you that okay this file already exists in this directory and uh, do you want to replace it and then it will give you an option y or n y stands for s n stands for no so that's what the cp and i flag does and uh, when you give the n flag it will not overwrite the file okay because by default it overrides the file and uh, if you specify the n flag it will not overwrite the file but the whole concept here is it is based on the file name what if the file name is the same and the file contents are different okay at that situation you might want something like the flag u okay now what the flag u does is it will update the destination file only when the source file is different from the destination file so by using the n flag you will make sure that the file is not overwritten okay but then if you use the u flag you will have another benefit okay what will happen when you use the u flag is so first it would check the file name if the file names are different then it would create a new file if in case uh, there is uh, another file by the same name then it would check the contents of that file if the contents of uh, that file and the file that's being copied if they are the same then it would, it would not get copied and it would only get copied when the content is different so at that time you'll have uh, two different files with the same name so that's the advantage with the uh, cp and u flag okay so let's try executing uh, these options all right so i'm just going to go back to my terminal here so first and foremost let's execute the uh, r flag okay it's capital r so do note that and uh, when you say enter so the item is copied so if you go back to your uh, documents folder you can see that there's a new folder called elements that's been created so this was initially not present and it's uh, present now okay now uh, what we'll do is i'll delete this okay i'm going to minimize this execute the same command along with the verbose flag all right so as you can see the uh, status of the system was also displayed in the meanwhile even though i entered my uh, text somewhere here yep it's right here correct so this was the earlier uh, command that i executed without the verbose okay here it just straight away copied the file okay the lms uh, uh, sorry the lms uh, folder to my uh, documents folder but when i gave v the informative message also came right so it uh, the step by step process of what all is being copied came so first uh, this was the first folder being copied this was the first sub folder being copied and after that all the other files that are being copied each and every document step by step it is all listed down and uh, you'll get all those details here if you give minus v in your command so that's what the minus v does okay so i'm left to show you the uh, i n and uh, u flags right so what i'm going to do is uh, let's say i just want to clear the screen now okay i'm going to remove this command here and go back to the documents folder and show you that the lms has been copied okay with the verbos when i created this folder okay now uh, what i wanted to show you is i wanted to show you copy with the interactive mode so earlier if you see the uh, desktop there is already an automobiles.txt right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy automobiles.txt i'm going to copy this one again to the desktop at this time it should uh, you know i'm going to use an i flag and it will not overwrite the existing flag so i'm going to say cp automobiles.txt to destination is uh, home slash edureka slash all right uh, i think i'm in the wrong directory right now okay so i need to go one uh, path back switch to documents all right now here i need to copy the automobiles from here right and uh, put it in the desktop so home slash edureka slash desktop okay so i'm gonna 
copy the automobiles.txt over here. So when I go enter, the automobiles.txt has been copied here again. So let me just go back to my desktop and see that even though I've uh, run, run this comment two times, one now and uh, one earlier and one uh, now just a couple of seconds back. There has been no duplicate that's been created. That's because this file has been overwritten. Okay, but the one with the name automobiles has been overwritten with the latest command. So what I'm going to show you now is I'm going to use an I flag here. Like I told you, I flag is uh, what gets you into interactive mode. So you will start interacting with the uh, Linux uh, kernel or the Linux shell over here. So as it says, the uh, home Edureka desktop automobile dot txt. It says overwrite. Do you want to overwrite this particular uh, file? Because it's already present. If you want to overwrite, if you say Y and if you enter, then the file would be overwritten. Okay, but if you uh, give N and enter, then that file would not be overwritten. So if I say no and if I enter, then uh, that copy would have failed. Okay, but if I do the same thing again and if I press Y, it would have uh, overwritten. The file would have been overwritten. So that is uh, what the I flag is. And then you have another option, okay, of uh, the N flag. So the N flag, what it does is it does not overwrite the file by default. So for that option, I told you that uh, by default it overwrites, right? So I also showed you earlier that uh, no duplicate was created and the existing file was overwritten. Supposing you don't want to do that, then you can just use the N flag, which would uh, automatically indicate and tell the uh, Linux uh, runtime engine that uh, not to overwrite this particular file, okay? So you can have any number of files there. So even if uh, the contents are different here, okay? So even in case uh, the new file that's being copied has a different content, okay? But it has the same name. Then even in that case, by specifying the end file, it will not be overwritten. Because there's a good chance that you might have made changes to the latest file and by copying another file with the same name to that same directory, then there's a good chance that you'll be losing out on the changes that you made, right? So at uh, that time, you can uh, use the end flag. So in fact, let me show you that with an example. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, right now we are in the documents directory. So I'm going to do a cat and uh, automobiles. Okay. So these are the contents here. And uh, let me update this. Okay. What I'm going to add is I'm going to add another uh, company of another uh, bike. Okay. Uh, let's say we are adding KTM to that list. Okay. So when I do control D and exit the interactive mode, and if I do cat automobiles txt, then KTM would be added over here. Okay. Now this uh, automobiles file in the documents right now. This is the updated one. Okay, but in the desktop the updated file is not present. Okay in the desktop the file with only uh, this much of content is there. Now I'm going to execute the command with the end flag. Okay, so with the end flag it's basically indicating that you're not supposed to overwrite the file. Okay, so when it says that when it finds out that automobiles dot txt is present over there also in the desktop also it would uh, not copy the file at all. Okay, so when I give enter and uh, of course, so there's nothing here. Now if I go to the uh, desktop, okay, if I click on automobiles or txt here, you can see that I'm, uh, KTM is not present. All right, but however, when I close it and if I uh, remove the end flag, right? If I remove this flag and execute it and if I go back to the automobiles or txt, you will find that KTM is updated. Awesome, right? So that's the power of this end flag. Okay. So that is uh, the end of uh, all the different flags that I was about to show you from my PPT. Okay. So additionally, there is one other uh, thing that I want to show you. Okay. Now I showed you how to copy from source to destination. Okay. And now, you know, what if you know the path of something and you want to copy it to your present directory to where you are currently. So this is basically, I'm just teaching you this uh, option to, you know, save some time. Uh, you know, at times you might want some uh, shortcuts or some hacks, right? You don't want to provide the complete path everywhere. So at that situations, at that scenarios, you can uh, use this uh, hack. And let me explain that before I uh, execute it in my uh, terminal. So what I'm saying is, uh, right now I'm in my desktop and uh, I have only my automobiles and my readme text files. Okay. Now, but in my documents folder, I have uh, three other texts. I have file onetxt and file two.txt. Okay. Uh, let's say I just want to copy the file two.txt. What will I do if I want to copy my file two.txt into my uh, desktop? I'll have to go to my uh, documents folder, then put the CP command and then enter the file name and then copy it to this folder, right? I have to specify the path of this desktop. So instead of that, there is another hack over there. Okay. Now instead of doing that, what I can do is I can just go to my terminal. I need to first go to the desktop folder button. Okay. So I'm going to go one step back. I'm going to say change to desktop. 
and here yes there is only automobiles.txt and there is uh, readme.txt now what i'm going to do is i'm going to run the cp command such that i copy file from this particular directory to the current directory okay so the file to txt if you remember that is present in my documents directory right so i'm going to specify the path to the documents directory and the path to documents directory is slash uh, home edureka and documents okay and the file name is uh, file 2.txt okay i'm going to copy this file which is under this path to my current directory okay instead of uh, having to specify my complete current directory i can just give one dot so this uh, one dot represents the current working directory okay i'm currently in my desktop and uh, what this command would do is it would copy this file into this uh, current directory okay now when i give enter and if i go back to my uh, desktop you'll see that the file 2.txt has been created okay that's because it, it went to this path picked up this file and pasted it in my uh, current direct okay so that's what this is about all right so this is what i wanted to show you guys this was something additional uh, which was not there on the slides so i'm uh, done with that so moving on to the next slide okay so uh, next up we have uh, is the move command okay so the mv like cp stands for copy the mv here stands for move okay and this is uh, used at times when you want to cut paste something okay uh, this would when we used copy then the original copy of that file was also present in the existing directory and it was created in another directory right but if you use the uh, mv command then it's uh, going to basically work like cut paste where it will remove the content from the uh, source directory and the only copy would be present in the destination directory all right so uh, let me straight away get started it's not too much of an explanation needed over here because uh, it's self explanatory if you use the i flag it basically enters into interactive mode again like before so the u flag is again the same as uh, what it was in the copy command it updates the destination file only when the source file is uh, different from the destination file and uh, the mv minus v again it would uh, you know uh, move uh, it would print the in system state okay prints the source and the destination files uh, gets into the interactive mode where the okay not interactive mode it basically means uh, the system status will be displayed over here okay that's what the verbose is all about uh, so let me go back to my terminal and uh, show you how this copy is done all right so let me clear the screen and currently i'm in my uh, desktop folder okay and here i have uh, these files i have automobiles.txt and readme and file2 okay now what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to use the move command to move file2.txt to another uh, destination I'm going to move it to the LMS, right? So when I give uh, LMS, okay, this means that this move command will work such that this file will be moved to LMS folder. Okay, let me give enter and go back to my desktop and find that it's not it's missing. That's because I ran a command over there. If I go to LMS, however, I'll find the file to .txt over here. All right, awesome, right? So that's what uh, the MV file does. And uh, supposing I want to uh, you know similar to copy uh, you can move multiple uh, files at the same time all right so i can uh, move you know supposing uh, i go back to my desktop okay and i'll find that there is automobiles and readme suppose i want to move both of these to the uh, lms directory then i can do that also i can just uh, simply give move i can give uh, automobiles.txt and readme.txt and specify the destination I can move to any other folder or I can move to LMS folder. If I'm moving it to LMS folder, then I just need to give LMS. Okay. But however, if I'm moving uh, to another uh, folder, then I got to start from the root, say home, uh, Edureka, and from here, let's say I want to go to downloads. Okay. So downloads, if I want to go, I'll give this path, I'll give enter. And if you notice, both are missing from my uh, desktop. And if I go to my Edureka and if I go to downloads, I can find the two files over here. So that's how simple it is, guys. So that's the uh, move command. And if you want to see the uh, system status, then you can use the V flag like we use for CP. So a similar log will be generated and shown. If you want to enter interactive mode, then you can use the I flag, right? If you're moving like two files, right? At that time, you might need the interactive uh, interactive file. So similar to a copy, where if you are uh, moving to the destination folder where there's an already another file with the same name, then at that time you might want to uh, use the I flag. It would ask you whether you want to override it or not. If you don't want to override it at all, then you can just give the N flag. But there again, if you don't want to use the uh, N flag either, then you can uh, use the minus U flag, 
which would update the destination file only when the source and the destination files are different. Okay, so these are the uh, different flags that can be used with MB. So the basically the flags that can be used here are the same as the flags that can be used with the copy command. So guys, uh, that's it with the uh, move command, and we can go to the next slide. Okay, we can go to the next topic. But before that, there is uh, one more functionality that I want to show you with respect to both copy and move. I uh, actually forgot to show you this aspect. Okay. Now uh, for this, let me first show you the GUI aspect. Okay. All right. I go to my Eureka, and if you go to my documents, you'll find all these uh, three text files and also my LMS folder. Right. Now whether be it copy or whether be it uh, move. Commands. I've showed you how to copy like one file or two files or three files. Okay, but what if you have like 25 files, right? So what you have like? I mean, just think about this. What if you're a proper uh, Linux user and you and you want to just transfer all your uh, files of some particular format, right? You want to just transfer it to another folder. You want to take a backup or something like that. What would you do? Instead of you know, you can do a Control A over here and choose all the files. Okay, or you can choose one after the other like this. But to the CLI, how will you do it? Correct. So you have such problems, right? So for that, you know, we have uh, options also for CLI, and uh, those work with both CP and the move commands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how that is done. Uh, so for that purpose, I'm going to first go to my documents directory. I want to make that my uh, PWD. So I'll just go on back, and here I am. Go to documents. Okay. Now I'm here. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to clear the screen. So of course, for clearing the screen, the shortcut is uh, Control L. Okay, if you guys have forgotten that, and uh, I also mentioned that earlier. So Control L is the shortcut for that. Uh, so yeah, we have automobile.txt file one and file two and LMS. So we have these four files and uh, one folder there. Okay, now if I want to move this one of the directory, then there's another option. So what I can do is I can use something called as regular expressions. Okay. Uh, regular expressions is one topic which I'm going to cover in detail later during the session. But just because we're in the CP or in the move commands uh, stage of this uh, demonstration, I want to continue and I want to show you this also. Okay, I want to just get finished with this part. So you will get an idea of uh, what I'm saying when you see me do this. Uh, so here we have these four uh, files. So first, let's use the copy command. So if I want to copy all the files which are in the form of a file, okay, so they are all in the .txt format, right? So what I can do is I can uh, just do a CB. I can uh, click on dot or rather asterisk dot txt. Okay. Now what this essentially does is instead of uh, searching for the text file by its name, when you specify an asterisk, it searches for all the files with the uh, dot txt. Okay, which is ending with a dot txt. So that's what this would do. And when we say CP followed by uh, asterisk dot txt, it means copy all the files that are ending with dot txt so in our case we have automobiles dot txt file one dot txt and uh, file two dot txt right so what this command would do is it would copy these things and put it in the path where i suggest here so let's say i want to put it in another folder okay let me start off from the root home edureka then here i think we have you know we have these options right okay this is the documents so in the edureka we have okay we have the music folder we have downloads pictures okay downloads of course i've already copied something in there so what i'll do is i'll move that to the music folder okay so the music directory so i'm going to say this and give enter so your copying has been uh, successful so if you go back to the uh, music directory you'll see that there are three new files one is automobiles the other one is file one and the other one is file two okay now uh, the same thing can be done for even move right uh, the same way we executed a copy we can also execute the move command move is going to completely move it it's more like cut pasting okay similar to how uh, you remember from windows let's move it to pictures okay so currently in pictures is nothing and in uh, music we have these three so when i execute the move command this folder should become empty and they should uh, all go to the pictures uh, folder all right so move okay but we have a problem for that what we need to do is we got to move to our uh, music folder right so it would this would probably show an error so i'm going to first uh, go back or rather go to music folder okay we are in documents right so what we're going to do is uh, cd music all right and i have my commands here right so here i'll execute that move command so it was this one i'm just going to replace cp with mv okay so from my uh, music directory, it's going to move all the folders or files which will have the .txt format. Okay, all the files, not folders. 
it will move all the files with the dot txt format and it will move it to home slash edureka slash let's move it to pictures what do you say okay so when i give enter that would have moved so let's go back to our folders music there's nothing here this has been cut pasted to the pictures directory all right so this is what i wanted to show you okay this is what i missed showing you earlier while executing the cp command but yeah here we are i have done this and uh, similarly if you want to go also uh, you know if you're from the music directory and if you want to move something to the uh, present working directory even that is possible okay so another possibility which i would like to show you is that uh, of going back going to pictures and then we have all this here right? i'm going to clear the screen ls again we have automobiles file1.txt and file2.txt right so uh, we can do a move command and uh, So right now uh, we are in the, uh, so let me clear the screen again. So I'm going to do a CD. I'm going to clear the screen. And uh, currently I'm going to do an LS. So some of our items are present in pictures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, move back to music. If I do an LS, there's nothing over here. So what I'll do is I'll say move slash home slash edureka slash pictures dot okay asterisk first dot txt and i want to move it to the current directory so when i do this again from the pictures everything would have moved back to music all right so that is the other uh, thing that i want to show you okay so similarly it works for even the copy command i'm pretty sure you'll understand uh, how it works so i'm not going to waste uh, too much time on that Okay, I've uh, cleared my screen and now let's uh, start with the next topic. Okay, I'm going to go back to my slides and yeah, the next topic is uh, make directory commands. Okay, so the next topic is uh, make directory. Okay, that's what MKDIR stands for. Make directory. All right, so it's simple. Again, if uh, it's all about creating a new directory or creating a new folder. Okay, so uh, to create a new directory, you just uh, specify MKDIR and uh, the path. Okay, the directory path. Okay, that would create a new subdirectory in that path. Okay, guys. So currently we are in the uh, documents, right? So I'm gonna do an ls. I have these many uh, things. So I'm gonna do a mkdir and create a new folder over here. So that folder name is gonna be uh, let's say folder one. Okay. When I do this, a new folder is created. So when I do the ls command again, so you can see that the folder one is uh, extra. Okay, it was not there the previous time that we executed the ls command. Okay, so that's how you create a new folder. So it's pretty simple. Now comes the other question. Okay, I can go into uh, the folder one. Okay, of course, there'll be nothing inside. Now, what if I want to create multiple folders? Okay, and uh, parent directories. Let's say something like I want to create folder one inside which I want to create a folder two and create a folder three. Is that possible? Okay, so I'm going to try doing that and show you if it's possible or not. Okay, so I'm going to say make directory folder one slash folder two. Okay, this would be folder two because I'm already inside folder one. This would be folder three and folder four. Okay, so this basically will run the make directory command inside folder one and it will make a directory of two, three, and four. Now, when I give enter, these folders should be created. Ideally, they should be created. Okay. Ideally speaking, so let me just verify everything once and show it to you. So it was documents. This was the new folder I created, folder one. There is nothing inside. Okay. Now uh, from the terminal, if I click enter, it says make directory cannot create directory folder two, three, and four. Okay. Because there's no such file or directory. Okay. Do you all know why that is? I asked you specifically, can we do it? That is because when we try to enter one directory, it's possible. Okay. When, like in this case, we specified just one, one directory, right? Just folder one. So it created the directory once. But in this case, there are too many directories that we need to create. Okay, it's like two, three, and four. How can make directory create so many folders? Because this is going to be in the form of a parent, child, or a subdirectory, right? We are creating folder two inside which there's a folder three, inside which there's a folder four. So in this case, mkdir is not enough. So this is when we need to use another flag called the hyphen p flag. That stands for parent. Okay. Let me go to my slides and just cover that aspect once.
So as you can see here, there's a flag called hyphen p. Okay, and what it does is it creates both a new parent directory and a subdirectory. And it's essentially used only when you're creating like two, three directories. And I mean, you're creating one directory and a couple of subdirectories under that directory. Okay, so that's when you use this. Uh, alternatively, you can also use this uh, hyphen hyphen parents. All right. And uh, if you want to create one parent directory and multiple subdirectories inside that directory, then you can use these flower brackets. Okay, inside the flower brackets, you can uh, have the different uh, folder names. Okay. So let me just quickly go to the terminal and show you that aspect. So make directory, these were there. And now I'm going to give minus p. And when I execute this, everything would have been created. So let me do a cd folder 2. Now do an ls, there's a folder 3. Now let me do this and enter. And let me do an ls again, there's a folder 4. Of course, here there would be nothing, right? So let me uh, enter this folder 4. And here there would be nothing, folder 4. So that's what I was talking about. Okay, uh, let me also verify that once from the terminal folder one. We created a folder two, inside which there's a folder three and there's a folder four. Okay, guys, so this is what we just created. So, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna just go back to my folder one here. Okay, in fact, yeah, okay, folder one should be good. Now, I wanna show you executing the same command with the flower bracket, right? I told you that. Creating a flower bracket will let you create multiple directories inside that directory. So if I'm going to say make directory folder uh, because it's inside folder one, I can create one here. Folder two, I can say comma folder three comma folder four. Okay, and if I close this flower bracket, then these three sub directories or folders would be created inside my folder one. All right. So give an enter here. If I go back to my GUI, so I go inside folder one. So initially there was one folder two. Okay. That was the folder two which I created earlier. Okay. And now I created folder two all in small. Small f, small f, and small f here. So folder two, folder three, folder four was created now. Folder this one was created earlier. Okay, guys. So that's how uh, you know you make directories. In fact, you can even append this with a parent. Say you are supposing you are now in folder uh, one, right? You can say make directory. You can say f2, put a slash, and then inside this f2 folder, these subdirectories will be created. Okay. Now if I give enter, I know what the problem here is. Uh, it says because f2 is not created right now. Correct. This is the time when you got to use the uh, hyphen p command, parents command, right? So which I showed you earlier. So now that I've used the minus p, so the parent is created and the uh, children are also created. So if I go back to folder one, this was f2 was what I created recently. All right. So inside f2, there should be folder two, folder three, folder four. All right. So this is uh, what we can do with respect to make directory commands. All right. So let me close this and go back to my slides. Okay. And uh, go to the next topic. Okay. So uh, next up is the uh, RM DIR and the RM commands. Okay, so this is the remove and this stands for remove directory. Now there's a subtle difference between the two. Okay, now uh, when you say, okay, the basic difference between the two is that when you say remove directory, it will only remove that particular directory. But when you say remove, it can also remove the sub directories or the child directories inside that one. So let me just go to my terminal and show you how these are executed. Okay, I'm going to go to my terminal. So currently I am in my folder one, right? So let's go to folder two and then do an ls cd folder three ls cd folder folder four. Okay, of course, there's nothing here. So what I can do is I'm in folder three now. Okay, ls again. Yes, I'm in folder three. And I, if I want to remove this folder, then I can do a remove directory folder four. All right, so when I do this, this particular uh, folder would have been deleted. Now from folder two, I can uh, again remove folder three. Okay, similar to how I uh, removed folder four. But how about I go one more path back. Okay, so right now I'm in LS. Okay, so if I do a PWD, you'll find that I'm in folder one. Okay, and when I do an LS, I have F2 folder two. I have a capital folder two. This is where my folder three and folder uh, four is present. Okay, so I have that and then I have a folder three and I have a folder four. Now, however, if I try doing a remove directory 
and if I try to remove folder 2, right, it will not work. It failed because the folder 2 which we are trying to delete, right, from inside folder 1, we are trying to delete the folder 2. This is that folder 2 and inside this folder 2, there is another folder that is folder 3. Let me just uh, show it to you once so that I can remove your confusion. So inside this uh, folder 2, I have folder 3, okay. And because I'm trying to delete this uh, folder 2, it's not able to delete because there is already a folder 3 inside this folder. That is the problem with remove directory. So guys, I just cleared the screen and uh, let me just do an LS again. So now I'm going to show you how to remove these folders. I showed you removing folder 4, okay. So inside this folder 3, I went and I uh, removed folder 4, okay. Now I'm going to show you how to remove multiple folders, okay, at the same time. Now let's say I'm running the same remove directory again. So I'm going to say remove folder 2 and uh, when I give enter it says failed to remove uh, folder 2 because the directory is not empty. Okay. Uh, do you know what the problem is? It's uh, telling right because the directory is not empty it's not able to delete. So because folder 3 is contained inside folder 2 it's not able to delete this folder. So if I want to delete folder 2 also then what I got to do is you know I got to first delete the folder 3 and then delete the folder 4. So I have to provide the absolute path of the uh, child directory. Okay so I'm going to say remove directory. Okay same like before I'm going to say folder 2 slash folder 3. When I run this command then my folder 3 will get deleted. Okay the child will get deleted but the parent will still be uh, active. Folder 2 will be active. Okay because uh, when I uh, use the RMDIR with folder 2 and folder 3, only folder 3 will get deleted. Let me show you uh, why that's the case. When I give enter, when I do an LS, folder 2 should be available. See, folder 2 is available, but when I do a folder uh, 2, there's nothing in here. Okay, there's nothing in here. So, if you want to do that, if you want to delete both the parent and the child at the same time, you got to use a minus P flag. So, let me show you to uh, use a minus P, uh, P flag. Okay. So I'm just going to make the folder 3 now and I'm going to show you how to use a P flag. So similar to how we use while creating a folder, we got to use the same remove directory. Okay, uh, RMDIR with the uh, hyphen P and folder 2 and folder 3, folder 2 slash folder 3. So in this case, both the folder 2 and the parent and the child will get deleted. Okay, enter. When I do an LS, I don't have a folder 2 here. Okay, this one is also deleted. So that's what a minus P flag does. Now let me just create, make a new directory. And uh, what I want to show you is the verbos. Okay, so I'm going to make directory. So again, the, the ones which I deleted have come back again, would have been created again. So I want to show you the usage of the verbos directory. When I add a V here, as per the slides, it said, right, verbos. So when I add a V here and when I hit enter, okay, I've uh, done the make directory again. So I have to actually remove the directory now. Okay. Now when I say remove directory and when I uh, try to print the uh, verbos hyphen PV, so it says first it's deleted the folder three. Okay. Which is answered and inside folder two after deleting that it has come and deleted folder two. Okay. So that's what this is all about. This is what uh, you know you need to know about the remove directory commands. Now uh, let me just clear the screen. So guys, uh, now let's uh, see how the RM command works. Okay, now uh, the RM command here, as it says from the slides, it can be used to remove uh, even non-empty directories. Okay, if we use the RM with the R flag, and if we use uh, the R and P flags together, then it removes the non-empty uh, directories, including the parent and the uh, sub-directories. Okay, so the one limitation that we had with RM DIR command was that. We could not remove uh, non empty directories. We had to first empty them and then only delete them. Okay. Otherwise, we had to specify the entire path and then, uh, you know, use the P flag to remove all the parents and all the uh, child sub directories in that path. Right. That was the limitation that we uh, had with remove directory. But in RM, we don't have that problem. Because uh, let's see. Okay. In LS, we have so many folders. Okay. So if I try going to F2, okay, and I do an LS here, then I have three different folders folder 2, folder 3, folder 4. Okay, now if it's an RM DIR command, it cannot technically delete this folder called F2. F2 is basically a non empty directory. Inside F2, there are other directories like uh, folder 2, 3, and 4. So let me just uh, show it to you once. So inside F2, we have three folders folder 2, folder 3, and folder 4. So with the uh, RM DIR command, we cannot definitely remove it, but with F2, we have a chance of removing it. Okay, 
that's because uh, we can make use of the R flag here, okay? But however, this will also, it will delete F2 and its subfolders, okay? So let me do an LS. And uh, if you can see here, initially under folder one, we had F2 and uh, these three, okay? But now we don't uh, have that under uh, F2 because that whole F2 folder is missing. If I go back to my folder one here, you'll see that the F2 is uh, missing over here too. That's because the remove, right? It uh, removed the whole uh, F2 folder in spite of it containing some uh, folders, okay? And that's what the R flag does. That's the advantage of uh, using the R flag, okay? So if the same thing, if we uh, use the R flag with the V flag, then it will print the uh, status also. It's like the verbos, right? It'll print, it'll uh, tell you what all has been deleted and how it has been deleted. So that's the advantage with using RM over uh, RMDIR, okay? At times, uh, this is more beneficial. So I'm just gonna clear the screen and uh, getting back to my presentation, I'm uh, done with all the concepts in this slide. So let me go on to the next topic, okay? So the next topic is gonna be that of uh, working with user permissions, okay? It's very important for a Linux administrator to know what these uh, user permissions are, okay? Because uh, the different files will be there, different directories will be there, and he has to determine what kind of access will be available for which user, right? So that's what is uh, controlled here. So uh, the different permissions are basically read, write, and uh, execute, okay? R stands for read, W stands for uh, write, and uh, execute is X, okay? So uh, initially, you'll get this kind of uh, an output. Okay, you know what? Let me go to my terminal and show you what happens when you run an ls ls, LS minus l command because user permissions is something which will appear and which you can control via the ls hyphen l command, right? Because when you do that, all the different file contents, whether it's a directory or whether it's uh, another file, all those things along with their uh, permissions will be visible in long format, right? So let me go to my uh, terminal first and uh, go to cd, all right? Now, when I do an ls, I have a list of all these uh, documents, okay? But however, when I do an ls hyphen l, I get it in long format, okay? So I get it something like this. So for each folder, I have the permission set. So for desktop, I have the permission sets and then I have the other components, okay? I'm gonna explain what this entire component, what the entire row means. So to not let you get too complicated, first I'm gonna explain only this part, okay? The first uh, 10 characters, if you see here, the first 10 characters are these and I will explain this part first and then I'll explain this set, these three blocks and then I'll explain the remaining blocks, okay? So getting back to this uh, first block, in my slides, you can see that the first block, it determines what is the file type, okay? It's either the file or directory type in fact. If that uh, is a directory, then it would be represented by D, okay? If you have a D as the first character over here, then that's a directory. Okay, as it says, but it can also be any other thing. If it's a hyphen like this, then it means that it's a normal file. Okay, but uh, in the first uh, letter, if it's a C, then it means that it's a character special file. And uh, if there is B over here in the spot of the first letter, then it's a binary special file. So basically, there can be four different uh, letters over here. It can be either a hyphen or a D, B or C, representing four different uh, aspects. Okay, so uh, that is the first uh, information that you have about that particular file. And then you have three different blocks, okay? So the next nine letters are gonna determine the user permissions, okay? And those nine are divided into three, 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 okay? So the first three represent the user permissions, okay? And the second block having three uh, RWX representatives uh, are those of group permissions. And the final block represents other permissions, okay? This means other users. Now this user is the actual user who is logged into the system, okay? That particular user. So this is the user permissions, this is the group permissions, which the user belong to and what the other group can view. And this is with respect to the other users, okay? That's what is meant by this, others. So if we have, uh, and the order always goes by RWX and RWX, and here also it will be R, W and X, okay? So that is the order, read, write and execute. So if the first three blocks are all R, W and X, then it means that the user has all the three permissions or the owner of the file or the user has uh, the read, write and the execute permissions, okay? And in this place, if there are uh, three characters, right? R, W and X in this order, it means that the owner or the user has uh, the permissions to read, write and execute that particular file, okay? And if there is R, W and X in the next block, then it means that the group has the read, write and execute permissions on that particular uh, file, 
so every file that's created right it will have a user and it will also have a default uh, group that it will be uh, assigned to so all the users a part of uh, that group will have the read write and execute permissions okay but whereas the last three here it stands for other users permission so there can be multiple users right the same system can have multiple users one of course will be the root user the other will be the owner or you and besides you they can be any number of users it can be your friends your colleagues or uh, you know other people so this others represents that and uh, if you have a blank in any place okay so in this case there's a blank over here in place of w there's a blank it means that this others they don't have the write access they only have the read access and the execute access all right and uh, similarly if you go back to the terminal okay and if you see here uh, take the example of uh, this particular file desktop okay desktop folder is where we were executing a lot of commands right it is under the Edureka folder. So yeah, this was the folder that we are talking about. The desktop right now, it's a directory basically, okay, that you all agree with. Then these three characters represent that, the person who's using it, okay. Right now, the person who's uh, using it, uh, because I'm logged in right now, and I've logged in with uh, this username, right. Sorry for that, guys. Yeah, and I've uh, logged in with this username, right, Edureka. So uh, me being the owner and me being the user, I have the read, write, and execute permissions okay but the group that i belong to okay that group does not have the read write and execute uh, permissions and the group that uh, this file belongs to now because uh, this file is either owned or used by me okay now because i'm the user i have this access and then this file will also belong to a group right so whenever you create this file it will be assigned to that particular user creating it and it will be assigned to a default group so we are talking about that group here Okay, and that particular group does not have uh, all three rights. It has only the read permission and the execute permission. It doesn't have the write permission. Okay, and the same thing can be said for uh, even the other users. So the other users in that system who will be using that system, they will only have the read and execute access on the uh, desktop. Okay, but whereas if you take the example of uh, this file1.txt, right, which I created some time back uh, during this session, this one, if you see the permissions are such that the first one is a hyphen. Okay. Uh, what hyphen technically means is uh, it's a normal file okay i explained that uh, hyphen is normal b stands for binary special file and c stands for character special file so of course we don't have uh, those options here we don't have the b and c options but what you got to understand this uh, is that this is a normal file and this is a directory okay wherever there is d so since this is a file the access for the user is uh, such that i have the read and write access okay but i can't execute it the user can't execute it and when it comes to the group even the group has the read and write access, but you cannot execute it. The other users, however, they have only the read access and they cannot execute this particular file, right? So they cannot execute or they cannot write this particular file. So that's what these uh, group permissions mean. And if you go forward from group permissions, there are more other blocks, right? So let's go back to the slides and see what they stand for. So in this slide, let's talk about the next three blocks. Okay, so the next block is uh, that of a number. Okay, you have a number over here and that represents the symbolic links. All right, the block after that is uh, the one that represents the uh, owner name and the one followed by that represents the group name. Okay, so that is with respect to these three blocks. All right, and then after that comes the file size of the particular file and then you have the timestamp. The time when the file was created, the file or the folder was created. This is the actual file size of the block. Okay, now that's what the user permissions here uh, represent. So if I quickly go back to the uh, terminal and show you, this is basically the symbolic link. This is the uh, owner name. This is the group name of the file. This is the uh, block size. Okay, and this is all in uh, kilobytes. Okay, and uh, this is the timestamp. And this is of course the name of the file, right? So we have the name of the file and that file will have first be the file type then user permissions then symbolic links then the owner name then group name then the file size then comes the timestamp at the end so that's what the different file permissions are uh, the read write and execute and if you want to modify any of uh, these file permissions then it's also possible okay now let me go to my slides and show you how that's possible let me show you some theory first okay so first of all if you want to change the permissions then you can use the chmod command Okay, you can use the chmod command as shown over here and uh, you can use it to change the access permission of both the files and the directories. If you want to change the owner of the particular file, okay, change the owner of that particular file or directory, then you can use the chown command and then if you want to change the group ownership of that file, then you can use the chgrp, okay. 
So when you use the chmod command, you got to specify whom are you referring to? Are you referring to the uh, the user? Are you referring to the group or are you referring to the other people? Okay, the other users you got to say that and then you got to use either a plus symbol or a minus symbol Okay, when you use plus it means that you're adding these two rights uh, So in this case when you're saying G plus WX, so G stands for group, right? So as you can see from uh, this particular slide G stands for group U stands for users and uh, others stands for O okay and all stands for a okay so as per this if you're using G over here then it means that you're uh, talking about the group and you're adding the W that is a right and the execute permissions you know that means you're giving them the W and uh, the right and the execute permissions okay and after that you got to specify the file name so this means it will modify the permissions to this for this particular file and similarly you can use the equal to symbol and also the minus symbol so when you use the equal to symbol then whatever rights you have uh, initially that will be overwritten so when you say chmod u is equal to rwx and then uh, it doesn't matter what the previous set of permissions were then the uh, the previous set of permissions will be replaced by whatever you specify here so you'll be setting that particular user to have the read write and execute access for that file okay and then uh, you can in fact specify uh, you know uh, you can set access control for multiple people you can set it for uh, groups users all at the same time so in this place this command we've uh, set it for the users here we are setting it read write and execute for users and then after that we are uh, setting it for the other people okay for the other users we are removing the write and the execute access okay the execute permissions so let me just uh, quickly go to my uh, terminal and show you that so currently uh, let's take the example of this pictures. Okay, let's take an example of this particular folder the user that is me I have the read write and execute permissions the group has read and execute only Okay, and uh, they of course the other users they also have only the read and execute now What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say chmod. Uh, I don't want to change my permissions. Okay, so I would rather uh, change the permissions that my group has so I would say G is equal to read and w okay so if you see here right now the group has read and execute okay i don't want to give them execute so if i want to remove execute i have to do uh, g minus r and then i have to uh, give comma g plus w okay but uh, those are two different arguments right so instead of using two different arguments i can just give an equal to which would replace this entire list with the uh, current arguments so instead of uh, having r and x i will replace that with r and w read and write okay i'll give a command and then now uh, we have others here the other users they have read and execute again so what i'll do is i'll uh, say o minus execute because i want to give others only the read access okay so in this case when i do this the x over here that will uh, become hyphen and uh, the hyphen here will become w okay i'll be enabling the w for them and uh, removing the execute and for these people i'll be removing the execute and now that i've specified what are the permissions and who are the uh, recipients i'm going to give the file name so let's say pictures okay so i'm going to give the ls minus l command again and now you can see that if you go to pictures it's been reset so the others have only the read access the others are blank okay and the uh, group have the read and write access and uh, this execute has been taken away from them so that is with respect to the read write and execute permissions that users can have all right so i'm just going to clear the screen and go back to my slides so similarly you can change even the uh, ownership of uh, certain files and uh, certain groups okay so uh, if you use a ch own okay ch uh, change ownership with that's what it stands for and when i follow that with the username and the file name then this particular file will have a new user or will have a new owner and uh, this will be the username okay and similarly even the group command works in the same fashion so uh, this is something that you can always uh, work on and you can figure it out all right guys so that brings us to the end of the third part of our demonstration okay so we still have a couple of more topics left but unfortunately i don't think we'll be able to cover it today because we've already exceeded the time limit so what we'll do is we'll continue the remaining topics in tomorrow's session okay so in tomorrow's session we'll talk about uh, linux repositories uh, tar files environment variables regular expressions processes adding users and networking okay when i say networking it's about ssh so these will be the topics that I will be covering in tomorrow's session. Okay. So guys on that note, let me conclude today's session. All right. And uh, I'll meet you all tomorrow. Same time. All right, guys. Okay. Hey man. Great. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Good night folks. See y'all. I hope you enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it, 
and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!